we will, at the end after engaging, uh, develop or inform you in terms of the procedure that we are going to follow in terms of engaging and considering uh, the, the submissions that we are going to receive uh, to this meeting this evening. With that, thank you very much. Can I take this opportunity to invite the, the, the Honorable MEC of COPTA in the, in the, in the Eastern Cape, Honorable Colisa Kata, to, to lead us and, and explain to us, and he will dis, uh, prescribe to us how this presentation is going to ensue. Over to you, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Select Committee, and uh, greetings to you and all members uh, of the committee. And uh, 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 leadership uh, from the Munich uh, that, that that is part of the meeting, uh, leadership of uh, organized labor, and uh, all senior managers present from uh, all spheres, uh, you know, of of, of government. Uh, good evening, and thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to appear uh, before uh, the select committee. Well, uh, this is a decision, as you said in your remarks, that we don't take it lightly as a provincial government. And uh, we consider the decision to be an act efforts have failed uh, to provide support to ensure that things are turned around as provided for in our legislations. We've considered uh, the legislative failures. We've considered the executive failures. We've considered exceptional circumstances. All these that should compel us to arrive at this decision. These include the impact of the crisis that is engulfing the municipality to the people of OR Tambo region, as they face many difficulties relating to water, more specifically, and other challenges that they face. So I would like at this point, Honorable Chair, with your permission, invite uh, the Director for Legal Services from COCTA, Mr. Makungu, uh, to do the presentation on behalf of uh, the provincial government. Thanks very much. With your permission, Chair. Mr. Makungu. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Honorable MC. Uh, good, good, of, good evening, Honorable Chairperson and members of the NCOP, uh, the HOT, the MEC, and all uh, stakeholder presence and uh, colleagues. Uh, I'm not in control of the presentation. But uh, whoever is in control, I will, I will, I will request uh, that uh, I, will, I, I will, I will outline that. Go to slide number so and so, uh, because I won't go word by word on the presentation. Uh, this is the presentation outline. Uh, there's a paper, the background. There's a motivation for the request. Uh, of Uh, the action taken by the by the exco factors that were considered by exco as the basis for dissolution conclusion and and recommendation we can proceed to the third slide uh, as indicated by the honorable mec uh, and and indeed by the chairperson of the meeting uh, we are here to present uh, the reasons uh, that led to the decision of the Eastern Cape Provincial Executive Council uh, to 
decide to invoke the provisions of section 139.1c of the constitution uh, in the affairs of OR Tambo district municipality. We can proceed to the fourth slide. Fourth slide controller. Thank you. As, as a way of background, um, the municipality has been facing serious governance and administrative crisis, uh, so much that in June 2020, uh, the municipal manager uh, was placed on a preconcert suspension uh, following the media expose uh, of the alleged payments to various companies without having done any work. Then, then they were obviously investigating agencies that came on board to establish uh, the veracity of the allegations, so much that the president was also approached and indeed he proclaimed, um, uh, he issued a proclamation number R23 of 2020 uh, for the ICIU to investigate uh, the issue of procurement of personal protective uh, equipment in the district. Slide number four. Five, sorry, thank you. Uh, an in-depth assessment was done by the department on the situation with a view to assess uh, the political environment under which the municipality operates, how this impacted on the social uh, responsibility of the municipality as outlined uh, in section 152 of the constitution. And finally, the economic impact as it relates to the expenditure of municipal grants and use of public pass in general reflected the base state of affairs in the municipality. The, the report revealed a major factual arguments that were advanced for a request for intervention. The facts were presented along four pillars, which is the financial management, the service delivery, uh, good governance and institutional capability. We can proceed to the next slide. The financial position of the municipality was at the state of brink of collapse to collapse with most of indicators showing, no, showing signs of distress. Uh, the municipality's 21-22 draft MTREF budget revealed an operating deficit budget of 14 million in, in the 21-22 financial year and insignificant surpluses of average of 38 million in the MTREF. The current ratio was reported as 1.1% in 2122. OR Tambo is close to technical insolvency because the available assets are very low compared to current liabilities. The 21-22 financial year irregularly adopted budget was assessed to be unfunded with a shortfall of 15 million. However, the magnitude of shortfall might be higher than the national treasury calculation if credible information can be disclosed. Next slide. The municipality budgeted for a zero increased tariff on business and domestic in the 21-22 MT REF period low rate of 67% estimated uh, in the MTREF remain a challenge. The municipality deliver the water services to the peri-urban area without recovering any cost of providing the service. There is no appetite to implement the strategy that was approved by council to build the peri-urban areas and the progress report not presented during the engagement. While the municipality it has a low revenue base. There are no effort to cap an operating expenditure. Our Tambo spends far above the corresponding revenue. The municipality has a danger allowance to employees who were at the front of line during national lockdown level one to three COVID-19 pandemic in the 2021 financial year. Uh, the South African 
bargaining council circular number five of 2020 provides advice to municipalities about employees working at the front line to fight COVID-19 uh, disease. The circular provides that council of the municipality must have an approved policy who should guide how the danger allowance should be paid. Next slide. Our town was struggling to respond to how allowances were determined. However, the municipality reported to have such policy at the time of payment. The municipality owes National Treasury an amount of 234 million, which was accounted as pre-payments in the 1920 financial statements. The municipality's budget for employee-related costs of 43% of the total operating budget due to the financial decisions that are taken without due diligence. The employee related costs remain higher than national treasury norm of 40%. The council adopted the implementation of vehicle allowance at an amount of 12,000 and cell phone allowance based on the tariff policy that was de developed a day before the council meeting. These allowances are also offered to the employees who do not use cars to perform the duties of the municipality. Continuous wasteful expenditure incurred by uh, the institution, which include hiring VIP security for the CFO, costing more than 100,000 a month, almost a year now. This has been happening almost a year now. The costs are incurred uh, on councillors sleeping in hotels, for their personal and political activities not related to municipal affairs. Next slide. The service delivery, uh, there are issues of water and sanitation backlog, as well as uh, grant performance uh, in, in 1920. Uh, the backlog eradication was not only substantial challenge facing our town. Much of the existing water and sanitation infrastructure was not adequately maintained and in many cases is not functioning. Outgoing refurbishment and maintenance are therefore a priority for sustainable water services, but this has not attended to by the municipality, regardless of numerous advices by the department. Now with regard uh, to grant performance uh, in 1920 financial year, uh, the municipality revealed, uh, received uh, 979793 million, which was adjusted uh, to, uh, to 943 million during 1920 financial year for MIC, uh, Water Services Infrastructure Grant, and Regional Park Infrastructure Grant. At the end of the financial year, the municipality spent 625 uh, million or 66% with an unspent of uh, trend, uh, just above 317 million. An amount of uh, uh, above 222 million was approved and uh, 94 million was rejected due to rollover processes in 19. Uh, Next slide. Slide number 10. We are still on, on, on the grant performance, an amount of uh, 37, 36 million was stopped through section D of DORA, uh, uh, and uh, nine, 94 million lost through rollover. The total amount of 130 million was lost in 1920 uh, financial year. For a municipality that is a water service authority with no SLA with its locals, this is a bad situation. Finalization of unspent grant uh, for the 1920, an amount of 234 million remained unspent, which was in respect of, of the NIC, uh, 45 million, which was unspent allocation of 18, 19 financial year. The regional bulk infrastructure grant 164 million, which was unspent allocation from 1819 financial year. And the water services infrastructure grant uh, is the 25 million that was unspent. The repayment uh, arrangement for 1920 unspent conditional grant is as follows. 
December 2020, it was 50 million. Uh, March uh, 21, uh, 34 million. And June 21, 150 million. Next slide. On the on on the and on, on the grant performance still on 2021 now the municipality yeah. received. So the municipality. A, a, mbato, a certain mbato, mbato, please, please, please. Okay, the, the municipality received 848, 500, 557 million. Yeah, I'm going to make making it difficult. Okay. Sorry, uh, 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 just excuse me. Okay, thank you, Chair. I, I, I let me. Uh, I mean, I requested that anyone who's disrupting us, chuck him out of this meeting, please. Don't waste time. You are the one who's now a problem at me because I said you must remove any person who, who's disrupting this meeting, please. Thank you. You can proceed. Sorry for that. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, we're still saying uh, in 2021, uh, the municipality received. Uh, 848, 557 million, which was adjusted by 237, 407 million to 6, 11, 547 million during 2021 financial year for MIG, uh, water services infrastructure grant and regional bulk infrastructure uh, grant. By May 2020, the municipality had spent 275, 665 million or 45% with an unspent of um, 335, 882 million that had to be spent before June 2021. Uh, then when we look at section 19 of uh, 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 Dora 2020, uh, impact of section 19, uh, stopping of uh, 2020 uh, Dora Act, is 237 uh, million in all three conditional grants. We can proceed to the next slide. Now still uh, on, on, on service delivery, the municipality has a allocation portion of funds to an organ of state, that is Amatola Water for the MIG, uh, <laughs> uh, RBIG, Schedule five conditional grants without following due process. Section 17 of 2020 DORA state that any expenditure incurred by the organ of state without consulting transferring officer and provincial treasury and approval by national treasury, such expenditure will not be recognized and will be unauthorized. A, a, an unspent amount of, of 2020 on 2020 2021. A balance of 410 million as at May 2020, which would be impractical. I mean, it, it, surely it was not spent by then. And uh, any unspent amount at the end of June would uh, have been a risk uh, due to the acting capacity of municipal manager as per MFMA circular 108. So, total amount lost uh, in the past three years is 379. Uh, 798 million. Next slide. Slide number 13. Thank you. Now we go to good governance. Uh, look at the personality of council and committees. The council meetings of our tambo are sitting though the composition is questionable because the recalled councillors from local municipality are always invited by the speaker to be part of council meeting. 
the presence of the recalled representative from locals has a huge risk of making all resolutions taken in those council meetings to be unlawful or invalid due to composition. The council has since adopted the budget for ITP uh, 21, uh, 22 in a council meeting held on the 30th of June 2021 with councillors that are again no longer in the district list at the IEC. Uh, this adoption, this, the, 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 the budget was adopted in the absence of the executive manager as she is challenging the presence of the recalled councillors in, in council meeting. And the report was tabled by the deputy executive mayor. It must be noted that the budget was never tabled by the executive mayor to the mayoral committee. And this in terms of the law is a procedural imperative. Slide 14. Still on good governance, the impact is not functional in the sense that there is a continued full expenditure incurred by the institution, which is the IP security for the CFO costing more than 100,000 per month for almost a year now, and there is no action taken in this respect. Further, there are costs that are incurred on councillors sleeping in hotels for their personal and political activities not related to municipal affairs. This gross violation of all regulations of financial management does a clear reflection on non-functionality of MPED. Audit committee and municipal aud uh, internal audit are functional. However, the recommendations by these committees are not being executed or implemented by the management and council. This therefore means that their existence and operation do not add value. The audit committee members are paid and their work is basically ignored by the institution. Slide. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Slide 15, uh, we have jumped slide 15. Can you go back to slide 15? Slide 15, please, before this 16. Okay. Uh, now uh, we'll go to the relations between the executive mayor and the speaker. Uh, the relations between the two have broken down to the extent that the executive mayor is no longer attending council meeting convened by the speaker uh, because he's questioning the composition of councillors. The speaker continues to convene council meetings, inviting the recalled representative from locals and these meetings are regarded as unlawful together with their resolutions. In council meetings convened by the speaker, the reports that are supposed to be tabled by executive mayor are, pre are presented by the deputy executive mayor. And this is an anomaly as it is not provided in law. On the 26th May 2021, two council meetings convened. The one with 39 councillors who petitioned the speaker to call a a, a meeting and the other called by the speaker with his group of councillors, including the recalled representative from locals. The council meeting that was called by the 39 councillors removed the speaker and the deputy executive mayor, and that has since been nullified by dated 18 June 2021. Next slide. Slide 16. Slide six, please. 
Can you then go to the next slide? Slide 16, yes. Uh, okay, we are still uh, on the relations between the exact to mayor and the school. The municipality and uh, may had two acting municipal managers, the one appointed by the executive mayor and another appointed through the council meeting convened by the speaker that are no longer in the district list. And this has since been uh, nullified by judgment dated 80 uh, June. Uh, in that judgment, the, the, the acting municipal manager was appointed by the executive mayor was uh, just the court decided that was illegal. Now, the non cooperation between the executive mayor and speaker has since spilled over to the administration, wherein the senior management is divided with another group working with the executive mayor, and the CFO with another group are reporting. For the <laughs> municipality. <laughs> just hold on a second. Nkwanzo is distracting this meeting. Nkwanzo, please. Hello, Nkwanzo. Okay, proceed. The municipality currently. Yeah, there is, there is a certain council who is very, very disruptive. Admin, can we just look, chase this person out of the meeting? Chuck this person out of the, the meeting forever. He or she mustn't come back in council. Okay, please proceed. The, the municipality is currently faced with uh, numerous litigation. Uh, that is unnecessary. And the speaker's office has illegally taken over legal services. Activities are a clear reflection of collateral oh, center that holds the administrative arm in the institution. Slide uh, 17. Slide 17. Now we'll get now to the action take uh, extend Cape Executive Council in response to what's happening at uh, our town. On the 8th July 2021, uh, there was a special meeting of EXCO after tabling of detailed report by the department and uh, that meeting resolved that it is, it, it is considering invoking provisions of section 139 in the affairs of uh, our tambo. The, the MEC was uh, directed to write to the speaker and the mayor and uh, to request from them uh, to state reasons, that is from municipal council, to state reasons why uh, section 139 1C may not be invoked the reason why uh, the, 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 the notice had to present to both the executive mayor and the speaker is because of the situation that we have already outlined. We wanted to make sure that uh, uh, all groups involved in the municipality uh, get the notice of the, of the provincial executive. Um, and they were given uh, seven days to respond. And on the ninth, uh, the notices uh, were delivered as directed to both the speaker and, uh, and uh, the, ex the executive mayor. Uh, it must be noted that the notices and respon responses of both executive mayor uh, 
uh, and the speaker are submitted to the committee. They were submitted uh, when uh, the notification was made to, to the NCOP. Now, we will look at the factors that were considered by, by the by EXCO uh, in taking a decision to invoke uh, section 139.1c. I, I must say, uh, 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 Chairperson, there, there was a comprehensive submission by both uh, the executive mayor and uh, the, the, the speaker. Uh, the speaker was opposed uh, to the dissolution and uh, he was saying he was conveying a council decision, uh, basically outlining that what was contained in the, not in the notice did not uh, constitute uh, executive failure uh, to implement executive obligations. Uh, and uh, that uh, really it was the executive mayor who was uh, a problem in the municipality and uh, they had the duty to protect the municipality's council. Uh, uh, because uh, the executive mayor is accountable to council, he can't, she can't be taking decisions. She can't be taking decisions uh, um, on behalf of the municipality. She reports to the to council. Uh, uh, basically, whatever was contained in the notice was uh, uh, disputed, and uh, we were referred to case law on 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 on. Section 139, 1C, uh, the leading case of being Muma, uh, the, the, the case in, in the Western Cape. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the speaker said we must consider those cases uh, when uh, we, 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 that is, he decided that EXCO must consider seriously those cases. Uh, on the other hand, um, the executive mayor uh, admitted to all the allegations that were contained in the notice, she actually made additions. Uh, she, she made additions uh, to the to 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 the to the allegations um, uh, to say there is more than what was contained in the notice. Some of the things we've captured in the background. Uh, now the exco looked at the principles of the intervention. I don't need to re to reread the contents of section 139.1, but as we know, uh, it involves taking an appropriate step uh, by, by one, issuing a directive, sorry, A, issuing a directive, B, assuming responsibility, or C, dissolving uh, the municipal council and appointing administrator uh, if exceptional circumstances warrant such a step. Let's go to the next slide. In taking the decision, the, 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 the EXCO was guided mainly by the principles that were enunciated uh, in the case of Numa, Numa local municipality and another besides uh, the premier of the Eastern Cape and others uh, is a 2012 uh, case. It's a well-known case. That case has useful guide, guidelines on, on the invocation of section 139.1c. And uh, the principles that were outlined in, this, in that case one, uh, the, the, the court said, uh, the, the factors that must exist, one, the municipality must either be unable to fulfill an executive obligation or is either failing or unable to, to fulfill the, the executive obligation. The court went on to say the inability to fulfill an executive obligation should not be unduly limited, but should be interpreted so as to include the inability to effectively fulfill an executive obligation. It should accordingly include a situation where a municipality attempted to perform uh, an executive obligation, but was unsuccessful. The phrase 
may also may also mean an unwillingness. Can, can you go to the next slide? Be the obligation not fulfilled must be an executive obligation. Uh, in that case, um, the court was clear. In fact, that is that can be deduced from the constitution that um, uh, this does not include uh, an obligation to approve budget or approve any revenue raising measures or a material breach of an obligation to provide basic services or to meet financial commitments. So those are regulated by other sections of 139, not the discretionary intervention. Uh, and uh, the court said that uh, the, this meaning must be accorded uh, to, to this term and must be found within and against the background of the constitutional framework of sections dealing with different spheres of government. Basically, the court says, uh, said, uh, when you deal with local government uh, in defining executive obligation, uh, it, it, it wanted to have a strict interpretation uh, and, and not to have a wider interpretation like it is the case with the, with the provincial and national governments. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Slide 22, please. Slide 22. Thank you. Uh, now, in the context of local government, okay, I've already dealt, yeah, so that's why I was saying uh, slide 22. Uh, the other aspect that must be considered uh, uh, as guided by the Muma case is that the intervention must be appropriate. And uh, uh, the word appropriate uh, uh, is, uh, basically means specifically suitable and proper. And uh, uh, it, it, the court said uh, the appropriate step are to be construed a step that as such as would be suitable in the sense that it must fit the situation. In other words, the intervention must address a particular circumstance of the case. Uh, next, next uh, slide, slide 23. Near, near, yes, we are nearing an end. Slide 23, please. The, 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 the main aspect for purposes of 139 1C is this thing of exceptional circumstances. Uh, the court in Muma uh, said, the existence of special circumstances is a prerequisite as the constitution states uh, to, to the exercise of power to dissolve the municipal council. Now, uh, exceptional uh, as defined by court in, in the dictionary meaning uh, means something out of ordinary, unusual nature, something which is uh, accepted in the sense that the general rule does not apply. Something uncommon, rare, or different. Uh, to be exceptional, the circumstances must right, rise out of or be incidental to the particular case, depending on the context in which it is used. The word exceptional is two shades of meaning. The primary meaning is unusual or different. The second meaning is marked unusual or specially different. A consideration must have been given to other forms of intervention. And I must say, as the MEC stated, uh, the less intrusive forms were seriously considered by, by EXCO. The, the, there was the discussions as to whether um, the, the uh, uh, a, a, a directive must be issued or section 139 1b must be considered 
but uh, uh, the assessment was that uh, that won't be an appropriate intervention. It won't change anything because there was a problem at the council level. Uh, also at MUMA, the, it was also stated that there must be a causal connection between the conduct of municipal council and the continued failure to comply with an executive obligation. I mean, if we have looked at, at the background, the, 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 the real problem uh, at, at our tambo is at council level. And uh, lastly, uh, the question that must be asked uh, is whether the municipality will be able to fulfill its obligation after the intervention is over. Uh, and then, um, next slide. Slide 24. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, with, with those principles at, at, at the back of the mind of EXCO, uh, then the state of affairs of our term was assessed. Uh, EXCO found that uh, um, uh, to start with, the representations of the executive mayor and the speaker, if you look, mere looking at the representations, they demonstrated extreme divisions among the office bearers in that municipality. The executive uh, mayor's response was accompanied by 27 councillors' signatures of council. Whereas on the other side, the speaker stated that he was mandated by council to make representations. Secondly, uh, the MEC, just before the matter was considered to, by EXCO, the MEC had received a request uh, from the speaker of Nyande and local municipality. The request was for removal of five councillors as councillors of Nyande and local municipality. Uh, in that request, it was stated that these councillors are, uh, uh, it was alleged that they have breached the code of conduct applicable to councillors. And one of uh, the alleged breaches uh, is that these councillors have been impersonating representative of Nyande and local municipality within our term. Uh, they acted fraudulently and continued to extract financial benefit from in the form of salaries from our Tambo district municipality with their action, which confirms the fact that now uh, the one of the locals were actually confirming that they had recalled uh, those five councillors, contrary to the to the representation that were made. Another matter looking at the state of affairs at our Tambo was the. Uh, the issue of uh, appropriate step, uh, whether or not uh, other uh, forms may not be considered. Uh, EXCO ha held that the inability to fulfill executive obligation is mainly the result of the conduct of the municipal office bearers. It includes taking resolutions in councils that are not properly constituted and non-observation of the rules and responsibilities. Uh, the EXCO held it cannot be appropriate for speaker to assume functions, including uh, executive functions, including administrative functions like taking over legal services and dealing with staff matters like conditions of employment and discipline matters. This was stated by the executive mayor. The executive mayor said, uh, had to be corrected by court that she could not uh, uh, appoint uh, an acting municipal manager. So uh, the resolution of council was considered to be the appropriate uh, step in the circumstances. Uh, slide 27. There comes in another no not so tall, whatever this is. No not so tall, please. No not so tall. Okay. Now, uh, okay, proceed. At our time, was on the exceptional circumstances. The situation uh, that we see at our time is exceptional and unprecedented in the province. 
Uh, non councillors have never been permitted to participate in the decision making for executive functions like legal services. This is not the first time the, the, the EXCO had to consider representations, but it has never received conflicting responses on the proposed or intended invocation of Section 139 before. The, the EXCO felt that uh, the municipality cannot fulfill its executive obligations exclusively because of council, not because of anything. And the, the, the EXCO felt that indeed uh, an appropriate form of intervention was invocation of section 139.1c. Slide 27, as we're approaching the conclusion. Next slide, thank you. On the basis of the above exposition and consideration of all implications in respect of the status quo, the executive council resolved to invoke section 139.1c uh, in the affairs of our tambo and appoint an administrator until a newly elected council uh, has been uh, appointed. The select committee is therefore asked to seriously consider the decision of EXCO. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's the submission, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for the submission. Um, there is a, an exceptional circumstance here in respect of... Honorable uh, Chair. Hello? Oh, um, honorable, let me see. You want to round up? Can I can I make just uh, two points? Okay, no yes, problem. No problem. Please, Over th thanks, honorable chair. Uh, honorable chair, just to to, to underline just uh, broadly uh, that uh, um, at the request of the municipality, uh, through the letter of the executive mayor, uh, to get um, uh, support through section one uh, fifty four. As per the practice, we dispatched a technical team to the municipality to do an assessment so that that assessment can inform the terms of reference for, inform for, 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 for support, also inform the kind of a team that you must put together in terms of team, team approach that we have adopted as we support municipalities. And that it must determine that assessment the length of the support that we can provide through section 154. That is general the practice so that you don't come sack your support is informed by a concrete situation so that you don't uh, come sack the kind of uh, 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 capabilities that you must deploy is informed by the concrete situation. And uh, it is in that regard that we drew terms of reference and it's important to put to the community that those terms of reference when tabled to council were rejected by council. They said that uh, they will not accept terms of reference. They want to make their own terms of reference. And uh, because of the depth of the challenge as informed by the assessment technically, constituted by a multidisciplinary team that did the assessment, which included provincial treasurer, Cocta, Salga, we then, said that um, this support will have to be uh, taking a period to uh, take over a period of six months. That period uh, as proposed uh, by uh, 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 Cocta was rejected. And the uh, council said that we want our own terms of reference. We want, uh, you know, three months to be the period for the section 154 support. They said that a uh, name that of the administrator uh, a DDG uh, in the department was to lead the intervention. They rejected the name. We then thought that this back and forth thing uh, with difficulty at the provincial executive because they thought that uh, if I do compromise, I'll set, I'll set a bad precedent. Because I went to the executive to say that, uh, and I also raised that with the minister uh, when the minister sought to intervene. And I approached the minister to say, in order to resolve this impasse, 
we must rather compromise as COCTA uh, to change the official who is going to be the acting MM to agree on the t- three months period for the 154 support to agree to take their own terms of reference, not the terms of reference in, informed by the technical process. That's the compromise that we took as, as COCTA. Something again, it is quite exceptional because it has not been done before that uh, those who want to support uh, dictate, you know, not informed by any technical kind of assessment that is done. So we then, because we, we, we're quite mindful of the fact that the longer the support delays, the deeper the crisis is going to be. So I had to make this compromise so that the team the ground to try and arrest the deteriorating situation. Indeed, uh, with that compromise, then the team was allowed in, led by Mr. Masse, a chief director in the department, and uh, other officials focusing on uh, technical services, focusing on finance, focusing on, on corporate services. The team worked there from December, and um, there was an illegal strike. The gates of the offices and municipalities were not being accessed because they were blocked by this illegal strike. There was a destruction of water valves, and uh, there was continuing crisis of uh, non-availability of water because of that kind of vandalism that was taking place. The intervention team, uh, support team came in engage uh, organized labor, both SAMU and IMATU. And uh, SAMU uh, co- responded to the team to be engaged. IMATU boycotted those meetings. And uh, SAMU in the submission, they distanced themselves in many of the activities that were taking place. And uh, informed by that engagement, the team decided then to apply for a court order, interdicting, uh, apply for a, a, a court interdict, interdicting then the blocking of the road so that the access, the gates of the municipality, so that there is access to offices, people can go and do work. It is then that the offices were opened, that relative stability was restored. The municipality was able to function to fix the valves that were that 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 that, that were destroyed to, to be able to, to ensure that people access services. Then comes the end February. The very report of the intervention, the support team indicated that uh, the municipality is going deeper into a crisis. And there is a case to extend uh, the 154 support. This honorable chair was flatly rejected. Again, with their own conditions that this area can come back, this area cannot come back. Which was in summary, a total rejection of an extension of a support that is, de- that is deeply needed by the situation. So I just wanted to highlight that point, the steps that we're taking, and uh, that then leads to this uh, step that we, are t- we have taken now, which is a step of last resort, as I've indicated on our chair. I just wanted to underline that. Otherwise, uh, the presentation does uh, cover uh, the basis of why we're taking the route we're taking. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable MEC, for the addition. Uh, I was indicating that there is an exceptional case in, in this particular instance, because clearly it does show that there are deep divisions, or in terms at least of the presentation, between the executive mayor and, and the speaker of the municipality. Normally, in meetings such as this, we allow one presentation from the municipality. But because of the nature of the issue at hand, I think we are going to take a presentation or submission by the executive mayor and allow the the speaker of the of the district municipality to also address this meeting. Uh, if you can be as short as possible. Uh, without restricting any one of you to speak, uh, we will gladly appreciate that. Over to you, Executive Mayor. You can address us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the Select Committee. Together with the other members, let me greet everyone, the MEC, the leadership of SALGA, 
the oral councillors from the district municipality and local municipalities, and the officials, all of them that are present to this meeting, that are in the council, the organized business, organized labor, the youth, women, and all other stakeholders that have been uh, invited to the meeting. Thank you very much. I think I'll be brief, but it's a long report, which I've been writing every day, if there's something which I see as an anomaly to the MEC and together with the minister. The issues of Uwartambo, they started to appear when we're having a strategic planning session, whereby in front of councillor, uh, I mean, of stakeholders that were invited together with the president's office, whereby the speaker together with some of the councillors, they wanted to close that strategic planning session and they made a, a, a coup d'etat whereby taking over everything. It was a frustration for me because there were stakeholders who came to assist us as we are a pilot of the district development model. And I reported this because it's unfortunate that this emanate from mainly the councillors, as we are also being a pilot of the separation of powers. When you come to the municipality, you'll find that there is an executive portion with its own municipal manager, the legislature being also another municipality, where also the director in the legislature act as if she is the municipal manager on that side. I've tried to sit with the honorable speaker, but to no avail, together with the deputy executive mayor, but they were at full blown stage on the 17th of June. I was from a, a quarantine because I tested positive for COVID. I had a, a, it was a council a meeting on the 17th. I held a, 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 a mayoral committee on the 15th to table a report, third quarter report, whereby the speaker and the deputy executive mayor, they said, the, the, the late municipal manager, Mr. Klazo, was going to be suspended. I said, you can't suspend a person without a report. You know, on that day, a report was crafted there and then in the council. It was from the deputy executive mayor. They didn't uh, 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 allow me to attend the council meeting on that day. They took me out deliberately because I was knocking. I got the link from a councillor Ngongwa, but they couldn't allow me in. I was knocking. Then they, they, they suspended the then acting municipal manager. I didn't agree to that because there was a process I was following whereby there were allegations that says there were uh, 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 service providers that uh, were paid monies without doing any work. That thing started when I took in, when I, I got in in the office, where the CFO came to me and told me that, he said, please CFO, can you write that down, everything, so that I can take it. Then the CFO refused to write down, said, I'm telling you, you cannot come and whisper being in a, a position of accountability. Then he went to the speaker. 
Then thereafter, when the MEC gave me some of the things that he got uh, uh, that were furnished to, to him by an unknown person, then I took those things because those were allegations. I gave the then uh, 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 municipal manager, who's late now, to respond. I gave him two days and he responded. I took that report to, 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 to the MEC. Then when they came with this issue, I said, I'm following a particular procedure, but I was told you will delay us. We want to take this MM out, out of the municipality. The bone of contention rushing to take the municipal manager because the municipal manager didn't want to approve the door-to-door -door COVID-19 expenditure that was done by the speaker's office. Then he wanted a, report, a further report on that. And I, I agreed. When I said, you cannot change budget items willy-nilly without giving me that, so that I take that to cancel. But if you incur an expenditure without giving me that, and you do it willy-nilly, but it was done when I went to the executive committee, I mean, mayoral committee meeting, whereby this was attested. And I said to some of other expenditure that were to be paid, I said, they mustn't be paid. But those expenditures were paid. I've taken them to the SIU. Then the expenditure for COVID-19, I got that on the 7th of August, the report, I've been writing letters to the CFO wanting that report of COVID-19 to take it to, to cancel. I got it when I was with uh, Mamun Beki of Auditor General in the Eastern province. When he said, when she said, the CFO has disclosed an amount of 1,898 as the expenditure of COVID. I said, thank you very much because we're having a virtual meeting. I said, thank you very much because I've been saying that I want a report. But come the 25th of August, when I was having a mayoral committee, a report was more than the 1,000 that was disclosed. When I said I want the directors of the companies that have been given, because we're given letters that every COVID-19 uh, 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 service provider taken, the directors must be published. They were never published in this municipality. I struggled to get the expenditure. I went to council and reported this anomaly and requested that an action must be taken to, 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 to the CFO. The council was on the 28th or 29th of August. Then I was told that an independent investigator would investigate that. That independent investigator was agreed by the council on the 30th of June, but the independent investigator was taken from the pool on the database. When I asked the then acting municipal manager, Mr. Mpako, how have you come to this name now that you are wanting a deviation through paragraph 36? How have you taken this independent investigator and the lawyer that was going to represent the speaker. The lawyer was announced on the council. The speaker said, I want this particular lawyer. I said, you are procuring and you are not supposed to procure. And I advised the council, I'll be shouted at by the councillors when I'm correcting something. Even that independent investigate, when I queried from the then 
acting municipal manager, Mr. Mpako, who acted from the 17th up to the 26th of June, then from the 30th, another uh, four months and three weeks down the line without going to the MEC uh, after three months. When I queried, how did you take this independent investigate? Because they said, we need an invest independent investigator who will come and investigate these uh, 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 reports that says there are service providers that are doing work uh, uh, that have been paid without doing work. When I, uh, I said, can you tell me, because I didn't see it on the paper being said, no, we took it in the database. Where is this person from? Said they're from uh, 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 Alfredo. I said, no, if you're saying that it's, it's they're from Alfredo, surely the CFO knows them and they want a particular outcome. Why have you done this? I was discussing it with the then acting municipal manager, Mr. Mpap. Why did you allow this? Because the council resolved on the 30th of June, but you decided to take it on a deviation together with, 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 with the lawyer to represent. When I said, even in the council, I raised it. I said, the lawyer must close that case and then proper procedures must follow. Then the speaker said, no, you are not going to tell us that. We'll take the lawyer that we want. They didn't follow the proper procedure. Even on the deviation, the amount was not written. I've got that report submitted to the SIU. Then thereafter, there were monies that we must reprioritize because it was COVID-19. I struggled because the councillors, they didn't want to agree until we did, we, we had to, 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 to write Ukuba, Sita and Ukuba, no, Masipinde, Sibe, I've forgotten the name now. Then thereafter. Executive Mayor, Executive Mayor, just yes. a moment. I'm sure there are a lot of issues, a lot of items that we want to bring to our attention. And you've already submitted the report and I really, really understand where you're coming from. But what is important for the purpose of this meeting is to speak with the decision okay. of the provincial government. Oh. Okay. Your municipality. I understand, and you know, there's a lot and that you can tell, and I can I can see that eagerness that you want to tell us everything. But what is important for the purpose of the meeting is to speak to the decision okay. of the provincial government to develop your municipality. That is what is the crux. Please, if you can just do that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will cut the long story short. I'll go straight to when the MEC wrote to us, wanted our opinion on the intention to institute section uh, uh, 111139, subsection 1C. I've said that it's an unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in. Because the issues that the MEC did raise, for instance, 18 councillors attending council meeting, even though they've been removed from the IEC list. I will agree with the MEC that indeed, it is like that. And also when we went to the SCOPA with the then acting municipal manager, we were questioned about that. And indeed the then acting municipal manager, Umamu Dunya, wrote to those councillors that by the 7th of, of May, they won't get their salaries. They must say reasons why they shouldn't go back. But after that, Umamu Dunya maybe 
he forgot that uh, uh, or he a lapse or a panel or even to be tetras scope. But what the Buya Payan she took that wrote that, that that letter. Then also, so those councillors, even myself in the council of the 17th of April, I attended. I raised it in the council meeting to say that can we discuss the issue of having these councillors or can we have our council meeting next week on Monday so that we look at the legality of having councillors who are no longer on the IEC list. But I had to raise it and I've said that it must be recorded that I will never attend a council meeting again with these councillors who are not on the IEC list. And then another thing, the issue of the money is underspending. Underspending because service providers, they were appointed on the 1st of April, 2021, with a financial year starting on the 1st June, 2020. Because every acting uh, municipal manager will go straight, will be appointed today, or she will be appointed today, the next day she or he's changing the SCM committees. I said to them, why are you changing the committees? Instead of saying that this company, this company must do the work, why don't you do it? Because I can see your interest, it's on the SCM. Then also the CFO, the budget, I told him that it's unfunded. He refused when I wrote, I've written several letters. For instance, our quarterly reports, he no longer attend. He was saying that, who said we must have a financial recovery plan? Recovery from what? It's written down by him. I've raised it with National Treasure. So the frustration that is there, especially on the monies, meant for service deliver. I then said it's better because it's better for section 139 because when section 154 was instituted, when I said it must come, they said not on the MM's office or on budget and treasury office. Then you can see that they wanted a person who will approve any money that is taken even wrongly. So it's on those bases that I've said, it's rather an administrator to come and assist this municipality. Because whenever I'm raising anything in the council, nobody will listen. I've raised it. You will have a committee after another. And yet our, our MPEP committee was super bad. The, all its decisions, they were not taken care of. The SIU, okay. uh, the SIU has come up with a report, nothing has been done. I've changed, I, I want to talk to this one. When Ms. Dunya was going to act after Mr. Massa went from section 154, the resolution was wrongly written. And I raised that. I gave Ms. Tunua one day to act, but that acting was on the social media. I wrote to her to say that, can I trust you if I've written a letter to you, it finds itself in the social media. Then when I said, I need the council to look at its resolution again on appointing then I gave Miss, Mr. Matizela to add that one was taken to court okay. saying that I've got another thing. Then the second one, on the 20th, I terminated Ms. Tunyo's acting capacity because there were DC matters. Also this one of SIU, it was coming to an end not taking any action. 
When okay. I said, I haven't taken an action, then I terminated so that a person must come so that it doesn't lapse. So oh, that's okay. why. Mayor, okay. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. In short, the, the essence of what you are saying to this who will appoint mayoral committee members. There's okay. many. Executive Mayor, just a second. If we go this way, we will never finish. We are going to spend the whole evening with this. The essence of what you are saying is that you support the provincial government on its decision to invoke section 1391C in the OR Tambo district municipality. That is what you are saying to us. That's what I'm saying because yeah. money mustn't go back to the coffers of national treasury. We have heard that. For we have heard that. Yes, we have heard that, Honorable uh, Your Worship. You have submitted the report to the provincial government, and that report, part of it is the basis in which the provincial government acted in the way that it acted, as I understand. And they presented that information to us in terms of the situation of governance, administration, political, financial, you know, service delivery in the in the in your municipality. I think it suffices. You 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 support the intervention made by by the provincial government. Yes, I think let, let's stop there. We have heard that if it's necessary, we will come back to you again to clarify one or two issues based on what you have done. We have received some annexes, uh, the reports that you submitted, they are part of us, we have that, we have looked at that, we have read them, we understand the Jesus. Chair, unmute, please, Chair. Chair, unmute yourself, please. I am the speaker, the speaker of the municipality, the voice of the and don't thank you. Uh, just the executive request that the mayor to be here to, to address us on the intervention and your view on the intervention. Over to you, speaker. Thank you very much, Chair of the Committee and the uh, members present here, the MEC, uh, uh, all the officials and the stakeholders present. Chair, I think uh, in this committee, before we start, uh, I think we're supposed to know whether to lie before this committee is not an offense now, because uh, it is proper for this committee to be told the truth. Uh, if I can start back a little bit, uh, please forgive me because a lot has been then presented here. And uh, <clears throat> what I have received uh, as speaker, a speaker. Speaker. speaker Hello, speaker, Chair. That was before you proceed. Address me and members of the committee about make your submission. I'm doing that, Chair. Then we start to focus on what others are doing. You can do that at the end, but you are here not to do that. You are here to give your opinion and make your submission on the I'm just, do, I'm just doing that, my Chair. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, Chair, the scene of OR Tambo District Municipality is to fight corruption, which we observed as a council that it has been there with its roots. And uh, there are outsiders who are the beneficiaries of what is taking place in that municipality. The OR Tambo District Municipality, having received the report of the Auditor General, the OR Tambo District Municipality, having realized that
that ever since we arrived there in 2018, there is no contract between OR Tambo and Amatola District, Amatola Port, and the OR Tambo District Municipality have observed that the OR Tambo had more than three billion fruitless and wasteful expenditure. The then chief whip is the current executive mayor, as I was the speaker. We worked very well to fight corrupt practices in that municipality, which we arrived existing in that municipality, which was in disclaimer in our river. If I move further, Chair, and I must applaud the sitting executive mayor while she was still the chief whip, and uh, the way she worked very hard to make sure that we are working together as the council, irrespective of political affiliations or we are traditional leaders, but to make sure that we root out corruption in that municipality. And she worked very well. Now, she, when we were continuing uh, trying to root out these corrupt practices, there was a time when the then executive mayor was then elected to be a member of the provincial uh, legislature. When then she was elected, the deputy executive mayor, who is currently the deputy executive mayor, Honorable Nogumla, was then uh, appointed by the council as the executive mayor. Now, What happened then, Chair? We continue to raise issues of maladministration and also the looting, which was the order of the day which we identified in our arrival. As such, myself and the current executive mayor, my Honorable Sokanyele, who just spoke before me, and the then uh, executive mayor, owner of Nogumla, and the MMC for finance, the then municipal manager. We went as far chair, to organize a meeting with Amatola in East London, where we wanted to establish this contract of Amatola and the uh, allegation of 168 million which was dammed there, which we were working collectively without any doubt among ourselves. So I must say in our arrival in East London, a meeting was organized in Hemingway. No Amatola were there. We were only told that no, the CEO went to Cape Town, so the meeting is not going to materialize. And the meeting was organized by the then municipal manager. And also, there were findings of the AG in 2018-2019 financial year, which then the council took a clear decision that consequence management must be implemented here. And the time frames were set by the council. Unfortunately, none was done. The then chief whip, who's the current executive mayor, took upon herself to go with all the whips of opposition parties and section 79 committees to visit projects. She came with a detailed report of what is transpired in the projects that are being done by the OR Tambo District Municipality. Now, indeed, I applauded her again uh, for that kind of uh, initiative, 
which then she even went to Adam Cork, where there are farmers of OR Tambo District Municipality. She came back with a fully detailed report. Now, check. The initiative of the council to root out corruption was the main thing because the quota provincially never get any joy. When we suspended the municipal manager, having followed all the legal processes, the MEC was very angry. And they said, we acted in a manner that is going to embarrass us as a council because we never followed proper uh, processes. We said, no, we have followed to such an extent that she, we were punished that if we lose that because the, 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 the then municipal manager challenged that in labor court, we will pay the cost on our own. We said as a council, we are more than ready as long as we are gonna root out corruption in that municipality and as we are prepared even now. Now, in speaker, 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 please, Hello. just a second. Yes, sir. Uh, let me tell you where we, where we are. With all these problems in mind, even your submissions, we are here. The provincial government wants but, to but, dissolve but, or is dissolved. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Otherwise, we are going to spend the whole evening here with this background that you are, the way you are proceeding in this meeting. We are here. The provincial government has taken a decision about your municipality. Speak to that. That is where we are. Uh, the problem that you have it, alluded it, my, 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 my honor, my honor yes. sir, I must respect your ruling. However, yes. the speakers before me were allowed uh, to start with a preamble and uh, I was no. listening attentively. However, let me zoom to this. Speaker, speaker, speaker please, please don't cast aspersions. I directed, I directed the mayor what to do and she complied because I indicated to her that she must speak to the decision of the provincial government. And I indicated when this meeting started that I'm sure in the last two years, we have interacted with this municipality more than four times. And we have this information, most of this information that all of you are bringing to tonight. Okay. We, we are here Alex. at a point where you are dissolved and we want to hear your view about the decision of the provincial government to dissolve you. That is the question that you must now, answer. With due respect. Let, me, let me go straight to what the provincial government has decided. So the provincial government, whilst they are presenting, they are even misrepresenting my report to before you. Now also, they are saying, for example, Chair, the, 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 the council convened by the speaker, misleading the same committee, uh, allowed the deputy executive mayor to present reports, which is anormal and there's no provision of law for that. If Chair, the Speaker of our Tambo District Municipality can invite you and your committee to go to Structures Act, Section 56, Subsection 6, which reads as follows, yeah, to my view and the view of the council. That subsection six of the Structures Act is clear to say, if the executive mayor is absent or unavailable to perform his or her function, the deputy executive mayor assume 
the duties of being the executive mayor. Subsection seven reads as follows. If the executive mayor is absent or there is no deputy executive mayor, or if the deputy executive mayor is absent or unable to perform his or her duties, the council must designate a council to act as the executive mayor. There is a provision of law. Now, let me move. All what has then been presented before you and uh, purporting as if the council is dysfunctional. The OR Tambo Council has got its calendar and the OR Tambo Council has always adhered to a rule of law. Between December and March, in fact, in March beginning, I was in hospital now due to COVID-19. But I can tell you on the 26th, February, the council was the end of the acting period of Mr. Marseille. And the quoting of section 154 by the office of the MEC as a basis of dissolving the OR Tambo uh, district municipality is misleading again, this committee, because this section 154 has nothing to do with the second mandate of a municipal manager or acting of a municipal manager. Section 154 is requested by the municipality as it was the case. And the terms of a reference were presented in a council where the minister and the MEC were present, were adopted. Now, say, I'm going to the reason that lead to the, 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 the ESCO to dissolve the municipality to show you that those reasons are not the reasons that you can carry forward as the basic reasons that can lead you to dissolve the municipality. Unless then the ESCO is adamant to say, we are more than ready to protect that corrupt uh, practices that is taking, that, taking place in that municipality. They are saying the municipality of OR Tambo use the councillors or speaker is inviting non councillors or expel the councillors as written to a letter uh, directed to me by the MEC. Now, there are no expelled councillors in our Tambo. What transpired when the council of the 26th appointed Mrs. Dunua as the acting municipal manager of OR Tambo District Municipality. Then the deputy executive mayor for a period of three months decided the speaker was not there. Speaker was not there, was still sick. Decided to appoint Mr. Matizela without the council decision. If you go to section 54 of the Systems Act, which deals with the appointment of municipal managers and managers accounted to municipal manager, it's a non-delegated function. Instead of issuing a letter to an acting municipal manager appointed by the council, appointed Mr. Matizela. Immediately when Mr. Matizela was appointed by the executive mayor, wrote to IEC and say to IEC, declaring a, a, a vacancy, indicating that the council resolved to declare a vacancy. How did I know that? It's when I was found by IEC requesting a resolution of a council declaring a vacancy. I started to be shocked. Immediately, I convened a special council to get a sense of this. And the IC sent a letter to me, written by the, the executive mayor, appointing Mr. Matizela against 
a municipal manager appointed by the council. That was the basis of IEC replacing those councillors. And in that meeting, we nullified what Mr. Matusela did, and we informed IEC. But seemingly, there was a plan of working IEC. When the IEC continued to that, we challenged IEC in court, and the IEC responded to say, no, they are not going to oppose, having seen the papers, they are not opposing that, they will be abided by the decision of the court. And the, the councillors in Oar Tambo took the council to court, challenging that the judgment of Judge Changulelo was clear to say the speaker was correct. And they challenged that again, the judgment of, uh, of Judge Tokota. Vindicated the speaker to, to say the speaker was correct. And those councillors are councillors. They appeal the matter to a Supreme Court of Appeal and their appeal was dismissed to say that there are no merits that they can win, no not prospects that they can win this, this, this appeal. Now, as we speak, for your information, Chair, the matter was before the court. I must assure you of the I, I the, uh, that is our time what is himself versus I see. The judgment will come it's either tomorrow or that day. So what the MEC have proposed and the and ESCO and to make sure that they dissolve the municipality to kill the evidence of all the corrupt activities that we as the OR Tambo district municipality, ir irrespective of whether you are a traditional leader or you are a, a opposition party, we said we are representatives of the people, poor people of OR Tambo. We can't tolerate a situation where the municipality is being milked day in, day out. We have been knocking to the office of the MEC, but the MEC never came. But he chose to invoke section 106 after the investigation report of the independent investigator was presented. When he realized that the report is agreeing to what the council is saying, he chose not to come and present the report because if he invoked section 106 of the Systems Act, he should have come and present the report as it is. He is correct to say the team was composed of the officials from the premier, uh, uh, treasurer, and his office. If indeed he had the courage to fight that corruption, that report which is contained in the, in the, in the report of section 106 he invoked is agreeing to us. And currently we have been vindicated by UAG. I was shocked to see new a, a reasons presented by Advocate Buba, who was once a, 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 a sent to talk to me and my the legal team of the council, who's serving now new things which are new. We should have responded to those things. Now agreeing to us that indeed there are officials, one official there, Chen, so yeah, because I don't want you to, to cut me, by the name of Mr. Matomela. Perpetrated himself as the director of water services, whilst he is the director in the office of the municipal manager. Now, signed a, 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 a recommended payment of 28 million as the director of water services, whilst he was never been a director of water services. The same uh, official approved that 28 million and that 28 million was paid. When the MEC said uh, the SIU report and the, and the executive mayor was, 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 was not taken care. No, we took care of the SIU report, but we were shocked when the SIU proclamation was done for a, 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 a four, command of million, whilst the council is talking about 168 million, which was reported to the MEC, and the premier is aware about that. None was included about that. I'm talking about a 28 million 
which even the DA councillors went out to talk about that, none was proclaimed to be dealing with that 28 million. And I'm worried because the president of this country is dedicated to make sure that we root out corruption. But the corruption that we see, we see only to certain individuals. There are those who are sweet hearts of corruption, who are the untouchables to such an extent that when the council is in unison to fight corruption, the ESCO decide to dissolve the municipality instead of applauding the council and join hands with the, the council and make sure that those who are found a guilty of misusing the money of the municipality get arrested. We have opened several cases which we have been writing towards as to where are these cases of fraud and maladministration that is taking place in that municipality. But those who are supposed to support the municipality decided to dissolve the municipality. Okay, and speaker. I oppose that a uh, uh, chair okay. and the uh, chair. I will oppose it today in the committee. I will even oppose it to another level because we can't allow a situation where people they will okay, speaker. sympathizing with the people of our tambo while they are milking the municipality. Okay, speaker, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, speaker, it's well, it's well captured. You are opposed to the intervention and you cited your reasons that you are the pioneers of corrupt of anti-corruption and you don't agree with all the reasons that the provincial government is advancing to dissolve your municipality. And as you say, you will find that decision here and in other forums. This is quite clear. The message is very clear. So thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, let's take, let's see where, where we go to now. Can I invite the organized labor? within the institution itself. I guess it's Sam. Can you try? Any representative to, from Sam who can address us? And please, Sam. again, Thank let you, me Thank you, Chairperson. Sorry, Chairperson, what about the opposition party? What about the opposition party, Chairperson? Chairperson. Oh, it's fine. We're going to Labour now, we invited the opposition parties as well. Yeah, it's OK. Sam. It's OK. It's OK. Take it easy. It's, it's my mistake. I take the point. It's my mistake. It's okay. Thank you very much. It's my mistake. We don't have to Thank fight. Thank you, Chair Who wants to speak now? Chair President. Let me direct the meeting. This is uh, the Secretary of Samu in our tambo. Can, can, can Samu wait? Let me direct the meeting. I made a mistake, Samu. It's not you on the platform. It's the political parties. It's okay, Chair. Thank you so much. I made that mistake. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, how many political parties do we have other than the ANC, DA, EFF, UDM, I guess, and which other political party? Tata Red Bears. Oh, yes. Okay, it's Tata Red Bears. Okay, it's okay. Let, let's start. I'll take the DA, the platform to the DA, introduce yourself and hit the Democratic Alliance. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, uh, committee. So that committee. Uh, the member is speaking from the DA Coca in our term. There is someone with the iPhone. There is someone with the iPhone distracting or a certain CP Angai is distracting the meeting. Okay, uh, DA, the platform is yours. It's City Tangai from the DA. Okay, you can proceed. Yes. Uh, Chairperson, I must thank you, the committee, everyone present, uh, for this opportunity. We as the DA in Ortambo, through our shadow MEC, in Bishop suggested that section 139 subsection 1 A or B should be uh, effected in our tambo 
to the MEC. He decided not to take that. He decided not to take to take that. And secondly, the after the that thing, the the the, 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 the council of Ortambo is was really in tatters in terms of uh, this corruption, trying to fight this corruption tooth and nail. But nonetheless, <laughs> all the attempts of fighting this corruption. The, 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 what you call the, 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 the council fought this corruption, but apparently it was not getting the support that it, it deserved. Another thing, we as the DA move section 139 subsection five of financial recovery plan for, for, for assisting this municipality because it has failed to do some other things that it ought to have done in order for us to be in good position. But apparently the support that was supposed to be provided to the council was not enough on, 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 on the part of the provincial government. Furthermore, now this thing of dissolving the council, we, we, we object it now by now because we have this, we have picked as the DA that there are factional battles between the ANC here that are not serving the interest of the people of our town. We've been since watching this thing going on and the municipality has been on 1.5 billion irregular fruit and, and wasteful expenditure for a number of years. And then for, for this new council of 2016 starting to try to fix things here in this municipality, but we are not being applauded to. But nonetheless, as the DA, we, we enter nowhere in between these factional battles of the ANC because that is not serving the interests of the community, which we believe if the priority is the people of our Tambo in terms of this project being functional, to have a tap that does not pour water, that is not a complete service. To have a project of multi-million, which does not like, uh, I can quote one in Umkan, who the sewer there. It's been standing there since 2011, but monies were paid to those that sewer project. And there were no consequences that were ever made taken against those people, the accounting officer. The accounting officer is responsible. He once wanted to, to beat me when I was questioning him, the, the late accounting officer. When I said to him, how can this municipality have a 74 million irregular right under your nose? Can you provide to this council municipal manager, the then Mr. Shazo, the late Mr. Shazo, the reasons why, how did we come into this situation where 74 million is declared under what is called irregular expenditure and you are an accounting officer? We, I even said, if it was DA in charge, he hated me for this thing and he wanted to fight to beat me. And I, I complained to the speaker. I complained to the executive mayor. I complained to the then chief whip. And then this matter was brush, 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 brush. But nonetheless, because I had nothing personal with him, I had to agree and forgive him. But I said, look, my man, I'm not fighting you. You should be delivering in your seat that you are occupying. That is an act, you are an, a current incumbent in that position. So there is a lot of corruption, but nonetheless, we, we have observed that there are professional battles of the ANC here. And then that we, the DA, we don't enter on those things. We don't get to any side of the ANC, whether they kill each other, we don't mind because it's their choice not to service the people. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. The DA, the message was was well delivered. We we also know about your case. It was highly publicized in the dispatch where you opened a case against the late uh, Mr. Fazo, the acting the, the municipal manager. 
uh, and we we understand what you're saying. What is the position of the DA uh, in this matter? Thank you very much. UDM. UDM. A representative from the UDM, the United Democratic Movement. I jump. The EFF. The Economic Freedom Fighters. Uh, 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 yes. uh, all protocol observed. Uh, uh, see economic freedom fighters. Abandu base o ar chamo. Eyo nando ba ine daga kulu. Nese special ngayo si o ar chamo. Kuku service abandu base o ar chamo. So, as EFF si bona e process yoku lebaze sa. E deliver. Le et Kobega, a Colombian spallet way to Use Eastern Cape. A Abandu Bagochi, Balin de la Mans, Balin de la Program, the family of Coban, where DGM. A I implement on President, sitting by on a program as our Cooper Bandu Bagochi and Lale. Cora Classic Chong and Ogloma Spala. Lomu to Peteo. A Unuzula Nangas and Dozao. So, so much economic freedom fighters. Eon and you know when that is a lot of spell, a good pond, a sinalo, lingers those two melella macos as a good is a lot of spell and over a pond or a lona, Lisa book by being or failure. service deliver. So, a pond or let to sell service deliver is a good. So, city getting a le council call go go say silly coba my cobag because it pond or late to lose the winds are more frugal go go faga or section one three nine three one as born by the administration is all to your lomus palate is a winds it difference will make or say so lo section 139 au zincede kuba i service deliver ayikho iphondo lonke so kaloma zomhlalo ngaphambili manje ehle andifuna ukuqhubeka kakhulu enkos okay thank you very much uh, EFF the message is very clear in terms of what where you stand about this matter you don't think that uh, the intervention in terms of the 1391C invocation by the provincial government will assist. Let's move to the next uh, uh, submission by uh, the association. Thank you, Jefferson. Good evening to you and everyone you else. Uh, this is Councillor B. Malkas from <laughs> Chatter and Residents Association. Chair, quickly, when we uh, Arrived at the can in the council in 2016, irregular expenditure our time was over three billion amongst the top in the country. In the presence of late Mr. Schlaz. And in 2018, surprisingly, EANC am extended the contract against the will of the opposition parties because if you were to be a right manager. Why we were in that quagmire of the regular that was going? We appointed, we appointed, we, we formed an act of committee with, to investigate that regular expenditure. And the main culprit proved to be Amatola Award. And we suggested that the contract be regularized or cancelled. Nothing of the two ever happened to date. Hence, um, Valoma to allow water coming, Kufagua, Guya, Imali, even Auditor General lately has vindicated that there are advances made to Amatola water to cheat the books of our term. We also pointed to the corruption here, purchase here, Zinf, Ukwa Prosperity, a building in Port St. John's for over 12, for 12 million. 
only to find the value was around 2 million. No consequences were ever done. The over time, which is being piloted for the separation of powers model, as you are doing in, in parliament. And uh, strangely enough, MPEC WIO is being chaired by the ruling party against our call that this thing is not what is being practiced with the two spheres of government. And as a result, to MPEG way to God compromise. Even these monies that were misused were picked up by the committee on water and sanitation because MPEG could not pick this thing up. Uh, at some point, uh, Jefferson, you mentioned that the executive mayor was called dealing with trying to dig into troubles over time. There was no report ever presented to council as to why you had called there and the mayoral committee. Uh, coming to the uh, chairperson here, yeah, that's section 154. Well, section 154 comes at the request of the party that is desiring support. It's not something that gets imposed. It is a difference between seconding a municipal manager and actually providing support. And even the name of the, of the person who was going to be a seconded, it was queried by the council because of the credentials of, her, of his previous record. And we did agree to the second one, which was proposed. But they insisted on six months, but we said the systems at this talking to three, three months. Then on the submission of a progress report, we will then be able to say, must he be extended? Mr. Master left without a report at this municipality. Uh, in, with, on the 17th of June, who, the, who, who speak up to table the report, which was showing 168 million paid into service provider without doing anywhere. That money has not been investigated to date we have requested OMEC that SIU investigate this 158 million. We further went on to appoint a private investigator in the name of APEC. APEC vindicated us. In the same vein, OMEC instituted Section 106, who also found the same, but the report was necessary. He never reported on, to council about, about this finding. Uh, Jefferson, the thing uh, that is being said about e, e non, the, the duty to establish and maintain administration, it's, it's not true. It is not within the executive mayor's ambit to appoint an acting municipal manager. It is the function that is not delegated. It's the council that must appoint. So to appoint Mr. Mazizela was irregular and illegal against, against the council resolution. Again, the Jefferson, if you can train 18 councillors at the beginning, because we were workshop on the separation of powers model, six months down the line, you are saying those councillors must go back. You end up bringing new ones for the six months duration that is left for this term. What are you doing? What was the purpose of training those people to take them back? I do not see the essence, but that's what they were wanting to do. The grand performance is the duty of the municipal manager. We had Mr. Masse to respond to the questions that were asked by the National Treasurer as to why these monies were not being spent. If we did not answer, it's not the council that should have done that work. And uh, this thing failure to... Lastly, Jefferson, there are a few things I just wanted to inquire. The standing committee, as it is here today, to look on, the, on these matters. But we, I want to find out the MEC for COGDA. He was written letters to come here. At the one meeting, she was connect, he connected virtually together with the, with the minister. And he, he promised to come to our town. He has never done so today to address the problem in our town. Uh, minister for COGDA also was here on that day, and she also promised to come. She has never come back. 
we equitably share, we made the budget as by advice by officials. And we were, we were told that our equitable share has been withheld without advancing any risk. I would also want to know, Chepesi, what is the position of the MEC on the matter? Because the head of the portfolio committee, the minister of the portfolio committee must have a say in this matter. Lastly, Chepesi, if we are going, we are a country that is working in unison. Who president in 2019 was here in Lusigisi? to launch a digital development as a vehicle to providing services in rural areas. Then now this dissolution of council, is it not in contradiction of what is the noble intention by our honorable president, His Excellency Ramaphosa, for the OR Tambo District Municipality to be ahead okay, in district development model as one being envisaged as the appropriate vehicle to deliver services. And here we are now at a stage where we, 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 the MEC wants to invoke section 139. To me, it's nothing else but the other than a mere perpetuation or exacerbation of corruption because there will be no one to oversight an administrator. If you okay. take in the light of what has happened. Thank you for the opportunity. Right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Any political party yeah. that that wants to speak? Uh, yes. UDM. 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 Yes, I've been called. Civic Independent. Okay, UDM can... first. UDM first. Uh, thanks, sir. Th thanks, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, chair, uh, to afford me this opportunity. Chair. We are here now uh, in this problem because of touching of untouchable. This uh, Maguire has been started when the council took a resolution. In fact, uh, detected or discovered uh, the corruption uh, which took place in the in the by the water and sanitation oversight let me command that committee because uh, the, the 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 impact is toothless because it's said by the african national congress uh, i believe you cannot be a reference player uh, chair when 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 the allegations were tabled in the council uh, in the month of 17 June uh, 2020. Yes, it was when the, the, the crisis has been started because um, um, the uh, executive, I mean, the MM then uh, was so highly protected. In fact, we are in a crisis because of the uh, NC, uh, you know, factional battles here. Remember, Chair, the MEC were informed many a times the MEC for Cocta, and uh, he was less interested. And he even uh, instituted 106 uh, uh, investigation, of which we were never got that report from the MEC Cocta, Cocta. Instead, he was so interested to dissolve this municipality. And uh, we were undermined by this council executive mayor uh, appointed uh, Mr. Majitela instead of respecting the resolution we took as a council. And the executive mayor, so Kanyele, never respected the, the, the council resolution. He undermined the council calendar when he held, uh, she held a, a strategic workshop without the, the following the, the council calendar. If we can follow the the, the principle or the the, 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 the the code of conduct. We are not heavy, we don't have an executive mayor as, as I speak. He ran away from that municipality. He, she has got a, a caucus so-called meetings. Uh, if the consecutive, three consecutive meetings you don't, you don't sit as a councillor, irrespective of the tag you have, you are no longer a councillor. She has got more than seven times uh, sitting of the council chaired by 
the legitimate uh, 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 speaker. We heard about, as opposition parties, about the speaker called uh, uh, Peping, uh, whom who was sharing the, 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 the so-called MPEG. So we don't have even the single week of the of the of the chief, chief whip in this council, and uh, there were councillors we, we we were informed. In fact, we were never informed, but we heard in the road in the, in the York Road news that they were they were uh, they were they were deployed in this municipality, which is unacceptable. But uh, I I have I, I I want to respect the deliberations uh, done by. Other, 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 uh, councillors, chair. I don't want to to take your time, but uh, we are in this mess because of the MEC Cocta. In fact, he once said in, in other meeting that uh, he is so surprised to find that uh, the ruling party is working with the opposition party. We are going to work with any as opposition party as long as we are going to fight the corruption in this municipality. This municipality is for the people of Artamo. It's not for the for the bishop or or a talent house. You cannot accept that. Thanks, sir. Okay, okay. No, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, independent. The independent councillor. Can I assume that the in Independent councillor is foregoing his opportunity to speak. Okay, yes. I we, in the interest of time, it's very late. ANC. Who, who's on the platform? ACDP. A ANC, Chair. No, not ANC. ANC has spoken. I gave the ANC both the mayor and the and uh, with due respect, ANC, I gave the mayor and the speaker who are from the same political party. With due yeah. respect, the civic independent is on is connecting on my phone. See, I, yes, I'm looking for the independent. If they, they are not available, it's okay, we'll move. Thank you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mandibulis <laughs> And it was the time to know them. So he was going to come back. But since then, Zana Lubeg, Jomo Bezotti, again, I'm chanting. Becoming a in the Urbana is for Umea, no speaker. Because after Umea, in a forum, would tell a council. Because the council, he was good at his table. Then Yena Yetwa, as she is on table. Of which as yet by the Lord we cut up and Jamor of the so feel good deliberate after Ulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebulebuleb
parties very patient yes. listening quite attentively and thank you very much for that uh, the next batch is the union some organized labor the platform is yours mama will you you will each it. the platform is yours There's also Imatu in Oartago TM, Chepesin. Thank you. Chepesin. Okay. What is that now? Because I said after Samu, Imatu will follow. Okay, thank you. That's what I've said. Thank you. Okay, fine. Uh, Imad, uh, Samu, platform is yours. Well, thank, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sandy Senyembez. Uh, Samu Chepesin in Wartambo. Manbuli is a Chepesin to the committee members and to the councillors. Being as Kalulang and Bulis and leadership, Samu in the province has joined. Uh, we're not going to be uh, detailed in dealing with the matter as a war term, because if you have listened, have been listening attentively, the, the, the matter of war term is just the way it has been displayed here and the way uh, leadership is presenting here is the way that suffers that 
causes suffer to us as employees as a Tambo. Uh, as Samu Chaperson, we have taken a very strong and a firm resolution uh, in advancing for the invoke of Section 1391C in a general meeting, Samu, that we set on the 27th of June. Uh, in that general meeting, Chair, we raised many issues as affected ambassadors, sing ambassadors, CCT, etc. The municipality that is named after a hero, that is Utatu Tabo, will be seen to be a white elephant because the zeal of fighting corruption that we are hearing here, uh, it doesn't show what it's supposed to be because it doesn't take the interest of the members of the community of Uartambo. It doesn't take the interest of workers of Uartambo. CIE whether it's a lip service, but they appreciate it is, it is taken serious in the corruption. It must be rooted out. But Tina Zengabasid is the person who are deeply worried in the Olympics in Ghana corner. We are supporting that the council as a war table right now is not serving us, is not serving the interests of Abbasidens, neither the interests of the voters of war table. Then the only solution now into dealing with their problems that are seem to be too deep and too personal to be addressed, whether political or organizational, then we cannot be found in that space as Samu. So with that is why we have appealed to the MEC before even this came to say, MEC intervene, take these comrades out of this municipality, then leave the municipality to the administrator. That is the position that is Samu took, uh, Chepesin. And we're here, Chepesin, to applaud that decision if it, is if it, it must be taken, because it's going to save more money that are going to litigations in this particular municipality that we are in. And it's going to less cost more money that are taken into our Amalquare touch a person that are not assisting in any service delivery related issues. And we are struggling, Jefferson. There are employees in our municipality that have not been paid. There are salaries that are in contract because monies are focused on dealing with their internal fights, their personal battles that they are fighting politicians, which makes us to bleed inside as ambassadors, Jefferson. We have been raising this matter to complain and our MEC that maybe is not listening onto our voice as one of the key stakeholders inside as labor, because uh, if we we'll continue defending these, these, all these things that we've been listening said here, we're not going to be able to go forward. But for the sake, I think everyone, for the sake of the service delivery, for the sake of uniting everyone that is still going to come to this municipality, I think is the only solution to the problem that everyone must be able to step aside now and be in a position to say, we have played our role. Now is the time for us to watch that, whether what is required by the people of our time, is it going to be achieved by the people that are still going to come? Because uh, if there's nothing that you are against, that you do not want to live inside, what is the fight for now when the yes. corruption is going to be rooted by giving a chance okay. That are not familiar with what is taking place in our town. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Samu. The message is clear. I am Adu. Thank you, Chaperson. Gumbe Lutetai. The platform is as, as from the beginning. We are totally against. Section 139, subsection 1C. On the we best interest the OR Tambo municipality and its community. Chaperson, there are no substantive issues that the MEC is raising in relation to invoking section 139. 
uh, subsection 1C. Who MEC, he role player of the crisis as a war tab. He is at the center of the crisis of war tab. He can't be the solution unto himself. The whole thing is about protecting thieves in war tab. Because all along, OR Tambo was seen to be doing very well until the Council of OR Tambo took a resolution, took a resolution to, to challenge corruption. When the, when the former municipal manager was suspended, that's when the MEC started walking to OR Tambo invoking section one, section 106, investigating the institution. But after investigating the institution, he never came back to our time and present the report. The our time of the party council have opened various cases of corruption. But instead of the province supporting our time to fight corruption, the province is fighting direct with those who are fighting corruption. To an extent that, they are even charging employees who are calling for the dismissal or the, the yes, the, dis, the dismissal or disciplinary action against those who are fined to be part of corruption after various investigations. Chairperson, the MEC is the one that advised the executive mayor to, 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 to look for a magistrate in Amtata to swear in council people under the pretext that those are councillors. Hence, there, they, hence, there is a belief in the MEC that there are councillors and non councillors Because a matter that is in court cannot be ruled by people who are not in court. So the, 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 the MEC is showing disregard of the law to protect corruption in our term. Chairperson, we must be very clear. When the section 154 support was requested from the province, the MEC sent tainted people to Ortam. Ortam is busy fighting corruption, but the MEC sent people who are, who are living under the cloud of corruption. One was one decided to resign from Pito Municipality in, in Western Cape under cloud of corruption. The other one was under bail conditions from Chris and Municipality, who was in the finance department. Under, under, the, under the cloud of corruption, the one was seconded as, as, as the executive, as, as the municipal manager, as acting municipal manager, resigned a day before the, the provincial legislature of St. Cape was about to discipline him for a sex scandal. All those things are in the public domain. And, and the, the MEC sent those people who lacks integrity, who lacks ethical conduct to run a municipality which is, is in trouble. Hence, we are saying the reason for invoking Section 139 is not in the best interest of the people of OR or in the best interest of good governance. Lastly, Chairperson, the MEC has not followed constitutional process. You can't start about section 139 subsection 1C. There is section 139 subsection 1A, which the MEC didn't even consider it. That section 139 subsection 1B, which the MEC ignored. The reason why they go for sex, subsection 139 1C is because they want to install someone who is going to be an administrator and open a pool of corruption in the absence of counsel in our term in order for them to benefit through corruption as the investigation has shown chairperson that some children some of the MECs in the province are the beneficiaries of the advance payment which is defined as corruption. Spouse of one of the provincial leaders in government is involved in, the, in, in, in this corruption is a beneficiary under Matola contracts, wherein a lot of money of Wartambo is hidden at Amatola for purposes of corruption. You can't, Chairperson, 
ask president to, to, to send SIU for, for only 4.8 million, whilst OR Tambo have lost more than 2.2 billion under corruption. And various independent investigation reports reflect that. And when cases are okay. open with hawks, hawks are not acting on those cases. And the province doesn't seem to have an interest in supporting the, the distributed part to fight for okay. corruption. As Imadu Chaperson, we are saying, the section 139 subsection 1C is not in the best interest of governance, but okay, it is sir. meant to drive true corruption in the absence of the council of our term. Because if the MEC is interested so much to stabilize the council, he is supposed to sit with the council, provide the necessary support, fight corruption with the council than trying to, 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 to dissolve the council in order for him to reinstall Mr. Masse, who failed to provide the report to the council after three months of him having acting as a municipal manager in Oartam. But he okay, can't sorry. provide the report to the council on the implementation of council resolution while okay, the council is still uh, uh, fighting corruption. Oh. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Your final, final, final doesn't come to an end. It's fine. Thank you very much, uh, Imadu. The message is well delivered, is well captured. Uh, is there any stakeholder that wants to, to speak? I've exhausted all the internal stakeholders, political parties, and the two unions. Imatu and Samu. Are there any external leader. stakeholders? Sorry? Tra traditional leaders that you should have that to recognize. Yes, that is why, that, that's why I'm going to uh, um, Can I invite Inko Zed, our traditional leaders, to address us? Can you kindly and business, introduce please. And business Sorry. as well. And business, yes, you will follow business. Any other stakeholder? Other than traditional leaders and the South business. African Youth Council. Thanks, Chair. South Council. African Youth Council. You will be afforded the opportunity. Oh, yes. Okay. Any other ones? Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going to take the last three submissions from the traditional leaders, from the business community, and the South African Youth Council. And I do. I will not allow local any municipalities. Other what? Local municipalities. Local, yes, yes, I think it's fair. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Let's be patient. This is an important process. Let's let's be patient. Can I invite Inkosi Inkosi Zetu to address us? Over to you. Do likewise. Just introduce yourself and then meet us. Thank you. Who's on the platform? Nkosi? Traditional leaders? The platform is yours? Kolisa is harassing, is abusing this meeting. Kolisa is scandal. Yo. The I'll jump go see and go to the business community, the business forum. The platform is Hello, uh, Thank you very much. Chairperson? Uh, Chairperson? Yeah, who's that? The bus business forum from our time is here. Yes, the platform is yours. Which, which business formation? Thank you. Because I'm the one who said I'm going to speak on the of business formation. Yeah, but, but you wait. You, wait. You, you don't have to fight. None of you has got the right to fight one another. I'm sharing the meeting. It's a Zoom meeting. It's a difficult meeting. You'll introduce yourself. We'll my, capture your, your, your name. We'll my, 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 my name is Ndumiso Nabez, and I'm representing our time of business forum. Yes, the business forum. Can you speak, Mr. Ntrebeza? Thank are, you. Thank uh, you, Chairperson. Protocol observed. Yes. Chairperson. Um, GPTI is chair. 
uh, as the local business forum of our Tambo against the implementation of section 139, subsection 1C. We are totally against that because it is to us suspicious. It is a suspicious on the reasons that the provincial executive seemingly is trying to hide the activities that are taking place at the uh, or Tambo district municipalities. Mm -hmm. These activities we're talking about are corrupt practices and maladministration. Because as we are sitting here, we have Auditor General's reports that cover periods of from 2016 financial year up to the current or the past financial year. All of those reports from the Auditor General, they detail what is taking place in that municipality. On top of that, there are private reports that were conducted by service providers appointed by the council following a petition that we submitted to the council. The reason for that petition was that there was repeatedly monies that were being written off by the council without any investigation as to what happened to those monies. Mm -hmm. And as a local business forum, we felt that we must take it up with the council. But what we noticed after attending several council meetings, we noticed that the resolutions that were taken by the council to deal with those corrupt activities and maladministration, as well as officials that were implicated in those reports that were produced by those uh, investiga uh, investigating uh, uh, companies. We found that the, the council was not implementing its own resolutions. We then took the matter to court to say that seemingly, the council is failing to implement its own resolution. And we are failing to understand as to why after these damning reports from both the, the, the Auditor General as well as private forensic reports that were presented to the council, we, we, we asked ourselves why were these resolutions not being implemented because we, we, we were of the view that the council took a resolution to fight or to root out corruption. Now, the reason why we are against uh, the decision of the provincial executive is that the provincial executive is sitting with the same reports and they have not tabled those reports before the council. And we are, we, we are not sure what is it that they are hiding uh, on those reports. Secondly, the resolution of the council to deal with corruption, we think that it is going to assist the tabled um, 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 a council of our time. But if you look at the developments and the uh, paper trail, as well as the, communi the, the, communi the communication that was sent to the council from the provincial executive, it doesn't look like the provincial executive has got the intention or intentions of working with the people of our Tambo to root out corruption. Because the corruption we're talking about here is more than 
the 164 million that is out there on the public dom uh, uh, domain. Here we are talking about the advancement for work that was never performed in various projects, because that is what is contained on the private forensic reports that we have with us. And uh, we, 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 we honestly do not understand when the, the, the provincial executive is jumping to invoke section 139, subsection 1C in order to address the situation. Okay, fine. Okay, also, fine. We, 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 we want to make this last point that perhaps we would be in support of the provincial executive, but we can't support them because there is a similar situation in Makan, in, in Makan town, that the provincial executive took a decision against the court judgment that sought to dissolve the council. But now they are the ones that want to dissolve the Artamo District Council. And we are please, not going to leave, leave Makanda, speak to Owar Tambo, please. Stick to Owar Tambo. You made a, your point How eloquently. Does an amount of 3.2 billion rands and other cases that have been exposed in, the, in those reports have not been dealt with decisively. Okay. So on that basis, we are in total opposite side of the decision of the provincial and, and, and you said you are from the business forum. Which, what is the name of your business forum? What is the name of your business forum? <laughs> We, we, Sir, what, what, what is the name of the business forum? Your the the name, name of the business, business forum, forum is OR Tambo Business Forum. OR Tambo Business Forum. Okay, thank you very yes, much. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a forum of local contractors within OR Tambo. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. There was, a, there was a voice Chain. again. Wait, just wait, just Chain. wait, please. I'm cheering. No, wait, wait. Not all the wait. They, there was another voice from the business community. Who, who was that? Yes, it's Luaz. Luaz Zimatungwan yes. from OR yes. Tambo Business Formation. We represent all the businesses in OR Tambo. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. let, me greet, let me first greet everyone equally. Uh, let me begin by saying the OR Tambo District Munis uh, a municipality has uh, in the recent uh, in, in in these past two years has failed us uh, dismally. Hence, uh, I am supporting the provincial government uh, in implementing section 139.1c. Uh, I agree with what uh, Samu was presenting here. I'm just going to give a thumbs up. Uh, who's that now? Who's that, who's that with music at this time of the uh, hour? Me and you, are, you are very disrespectful, please. You are disrespectful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was okay. saying. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I was saying, let me just give a, a thumb sketch of, of what uh, 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 has been a frustration to the business community of our Tambo. Uh, firstly, when a service provider uh, renders service in the, uh, here at the municipality and not being paid in the municipality for a period of uh, three months or four months, it's very... Uh, it's very uh, dangerous to the to the to that service provider, and it has the potential of destroying uh, that SMS, SMME. 
Hence, we are we are saying as the as the as the uh, OR Tambo uh, business formation, we agree with uh, with with uh, provincial government because now as it stands as the OR Tambo service providers are not being paid. The, now currently they are saying that there is no money. Uh, previously, there was a dilly-dallying. There, was, there, there were uh, about three or two municipal managers. When you have a problem of getting your payment, uh, you would be told to go to this side and this side, to be okay. thrown from pillar to post. Secondly, uh, when the councillors, the councillors there in the war tambo, uh, particularly those which are in Troika, and some faction within the OR Tambo take business people and have meetings with them on the side, promising them uh, to get that they are going to get jobs and bringing procurement plans from the municipality. You can you can visit to see that from the outside that the, 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 that municipality is no longer uh, working and is no longer bringing the. Is no longer bringing the, 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 the uh, you can see how far that is no longer uh, servicing the, the, the people of that municipality. And thirdly, the, 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 the uh, you are not which was designed. You are not your, your point is well captured. You are not messing it up. Okay. I wanted to give you more time, but you are now messing it up because you are prolonging and you, you, you keep on saying lastly, lastly. We can't oh, tolerate oh, thirdly, it. Thirdly, thirdly, and for the last time. Thirdly, yes, there's okay. a program that was supposed to service the people of OR Tambo on in, in accelerating service delivery. That was going to benefit a lot of the, the community of the OR Tambo in, in service delivery and also benefit the SMMEs. But that process has been delayed because of the okay. infighting that is happening with a uh, uh, within the council of the OR Tambo. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Lazo, it's okay. It's okay. You delivered your message. Your message is very clear. We captured that. It's too well captured. Your your business formation uh, supports. That's that's the essence. We understood that. There was a lady called. Thank you. That I surprised. The call. The call. Yes. From which organization? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I come that from Business Chamber. Hello, Chair. Now there is a mushrooming of this business, business, business. Yeah, and, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, it's in, we are in a democratic country, Chair. So we have a okay, right okay. to establish this uh, formation, business formation. Yes, but at the point that I was asking how many, there was only one person, now they are much roomy. That's my problem. I don't no. dispute the fact that you might be existing, it's okay. Okay, Sorry, proceed Chair. the column. Okay, proceed the Thank column. you, thank you, Chair. As the OR Tambo Business Chamber, we are in full support. We are in full support of Section 139, one sex subsection one C based on the following reasons. Uh, at some stage two years ago, we were invited to an a strategic planning workshop uh, in Bizana, where we saw a confused council. Some left the, the meeting whilst the process was going on. Later they came back. We have seen suffering of SMMEs based on the delays, delays in processing payments. We had at some stage a service providers that were not paid for more than eight months. These service providers indeed were, were, were thrown from pillar to post because of confusion, many acting managers not knowing who you have to go to. And we also noted that after the MM was suspended, we expected to see consequence management at play, where 
those uh, managers or directors that were implicated in any form of corruption were made to pay for that. So as uh, oh, our Tambo Business Chamber, we are in full support that we have seen a lot of confusion, a lot of money that remain unspent at OR Tambo, and we feel it is right that the MEC took that decision to invoke that section 139, subsection 1C. All we need is the stability at OR Tambo. We need stability. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Napolo. Is there anyone from the business again? There, is a, there, there was a gentleman from, from the youth, the South African Youth Council. The platform is yours. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, all protocol observed. My name is Mbale Gingolis. I am making this uh, representation as the chairperson of the South African Youth Council in the district. Let me start by saying we are against the dissolution of the council. We are against the invocation of section 139, subsection 1, paragraph C. Was it is not on the best or in the best interest of our people, especially young people, who are a majority in this district. The population of this, this district is 1.6. And 800,000 800, plus are young people, and majority of whom are unemployed. They live under severe conditions of poverty. And if you highlight the reasons that are advocated by this dissolution, we can't accept them as exceptional circumstances that can warrant the dissolution of the council. At the point and at the time when the council is about to kill and also eradicate corruption that has been ravaging this municipality. Even the local, council, the local councils that are about to speak, we've been observing all these events. They have been party to the same problem that is happening at the district municipality. If you listen to the presentation of all the parties that are part of the council, they are highlighting and pinpointing to the frustration that is felt by the majority of councillors in Warta. We cannot accept that under democratic rule, that majority will be suppressed on the basis that certain leaders have an interest of making sure that they turn the municipality into a milk kind of a thing, where they milk the resources that are meant to service the poor and the downtrodden. More especially us as young people, this thing of this municipality does not help us. Even when there was a support, we were never called as stakeholders to share our views on how the matter of Wartambo is supposed to be dealt with. Instead, the, way, the manner in which the East was conducted, the very same reason now for the dissolution are the very same reasons that were advanced to, to, sub, to give support to the council. What has changed now? Even when the, the MEC was uh, issuing the, the section 106, I don't know whether section 106 in support of the council to bring the acting MM to bring certain members from the provincial government to give support to the council. These are the very same reasons what has changed. And he advanced one thing, which is to assist the council to unearth the corruption and kill the corruption over time. Instead of assisting that call, he is dissolving the very same council that is busy fighting the corruption. Now, as young people in Wartambo are against this call, we understand that at the point or at the time when our country is supposed to be united in fighting the corruption, there will be few individuals who will be in disarray or working against those who are eager to fight the corruption. We've been listening to all these people, more especially those who are part of the council. There is one element 
that is, is, is identified by young people in, in the council. The intractable person, the person who is always against the law, who is appointing willy-nilly without consulting the council, yet the council is the body that is supposed to employ the municipal, the municipal manager. It's always I, I, but you can listen to all other speakers. They say we, we, which is the majority. It is the majority that has been doing all this good work. Let's first wait for the report that will be tabled, but as we have, as we have been promised by the MEC to come present the report after he has sent the delegation for investigation. Because it is exactly the same problem we are facing today. And this competition is nothing <laughs> but politics of the ANC who have since came in and destabilized the government. It's the fight against those who are inside government and those who are outside government. And we cannot allow such a thing to continue. So in this, at this point in time, we request that as the South African Youth Council be given an opportunity to make the written submission as it were in the case okay. of Wartambo and the challenges facing Wartambo, in particular young people and the council of Wartambo, because as young people we're not getting any form of support. And we believe that even if you can invoke that section 139 subsection 1 paragraph C, it won't help, it will be even worse. Because the consequences of invoking that uh, section will be dire to us as young people. Okay. Because there will be no one to, 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 to account on matters that are supposed to be taken uh, at him, uh, in, in, the, in the district. Okay, but last one from the uh, uh, chair, then I shut up. On these issues of uh, uh, the non the payment, the prepayment, it's something that we've been and <laughs> fighting for as young people. That young people, even the companies, you can highlight, you can even ask the report. All the companies that have been paid are young, are old people. There are no young people. Young people are not getting any opportunities in that municipality in terms of jobs. In terms of even the tasks that are issued in the municipality, it's only certain individuals who are even outside what term. We are all fighting for what term, but no one is a beneficiary of the corruption that is happening in what term. All the beneficiaries of the corruption that is happening in what term are outside what term. And that's, that must be made clear in this forum. Thank you very much, Mr. Beche. And please, okay, uh, thank you. Beche, don't forget to uh, give. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Baleki. Chair, no, what is that now? Chair, Chair. Uh, I've closed the, the, the engagements. You will Chair. realize that we'll be here since six o'clock. Chair, uh, intensely listening to you. Who, who keeps on Zuki Isa, Ghana? Which organization are you representing? I'm representing the Young Communist League of South Africa, Chair. Yes, Chairman, we call it church as women in business in our chamber as well. Anybody who speaks now without my authority is disrespectful. Is disrespecting this meeting and doesn't want this meeting to reach its logical conclusion. Under any normal circumstance, you will respect the chair when he's on the platform. You will, I have not suppressed anybody to speak in this meeting. And this howling is actually weakening your case because we can see what is happening here. Please, I beg you, I beg you, don't do that. There's a platform where we allow everybody to speak and I'm going under the circumstances, very difficult. I'm managing a very complex issue about the life of the people of O'Artambo. 
And please let's not play with that with that thing. Please, I beg you. I'm at the point you. where I want to establish who wants to speak and from which organization. And then Chief, you to make a Chief, Chair, Chair, I am uh, Zukisa Kana, the from I the young community. I have said initially, I was giving in course the business and business people came in large numbers and I was to close with the South African Youth Council. No, we I will make a ruling whether I allow any one of you who wants to speak here based on how I understand you to be. Uh, and uh, apologies, Chair, but you recognize the local municipalities you did. Yes, uh, yes, I'll come to I'll come to the local municipalities. It's fine. Uh, 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 let me establish this. Zuki Sag, I see the hand of Zuki Sag, Ghana. Which organization? Young Communist League of South Africa, Chair. Yes, yes. Mbalekin, yeah, it's fine. Mbalekin, Kolisi, you spoke, eh? Yes, yes. Sir. But, but yes. Sir, you, I want your assistance you, with this regard. You, you, you spoke. Uh, yes, sir. Councillor Kappa, can you just... Uh, Put your, your hand down, please. Sorry, sorry Chair. You your, your hand Can down. Can I assist you, Chair? Can I assist no, you, Chair? I don't want any assistance. You, you, I understand, you, you Chair. You're but... raising your hands, yeah. and yes. it is clear that there are people who want to disrupt the, this meeting, and I'm not yes. going to tolerate that. Yes. I'm not going to tolerate that. As much as we are patient, we listen to you, we respect you, you must also understand the predicament that we're facing. It's not difficult, it's not easy to hold a Zoom meeting and control it. The onus is upon those who participate to understand that predicament and therefore respect the chair of the, of the session. As easy as that. And if you continue to speak, I will suppress you and I will take a ruling about this. And I must just underline this point. This is an official meeting of parliament. It is governed by the rules of parliament and no one is allowed to disrupt a meeting of parliament. There are consequences to that. Please, I beg you, let us not go there. This meeting is going very, very well. You, it's heated, it's emotional. People are raising their issues in the way that they are doing, and we understand that, and we respect that. And please, I beg you, respect the proceedings of this meeting, please. Now, what I'm going to do in the interest of time, I'll come to, I'll come back to, if possible, to any other organization. I'm going to give the political leadership of the local municipalities. And then I'll come back to all these other organizations that are coming now at the time that I was about to close uh, the deliberations from the side of the external stakeholders. Uh, and sure. I tell you, all the municipalities, uh, the, the people who are representing municipalities are the political office bearers of the municipalities. Otherwise, sure. We are to allow anybody to speak, it will create a, a crisis for us. Chair? Yes? With all due respect, Chair, we thought, Chair, in as much as you have done with business, where all business formations also spoke as youth organizations that are in Oratambo district who are affected by the decision. Yes. We thought that would also be given an opportunity yes. to air our views. Yes, okay, sir. Um, I'll, I'll come back to you, yes. I'll come back sorry, to you. Ja sorry, Jack. Sorry, Jack. Ghana is the councillor for KSD, so he's, yeah, you yeah, must yeah, not yeah. allow him to speak. Look, 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 Please. Look, 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 I'm taking the local municipalities of Oratambo. Uh, can you first, before you want to address this meeting, introduce yourself, who you are? I will, I'm sure members of the committee understand the situation that we're finding ourselves in. I will decide. I'll, unless you are an executive mayor or the mayor of a municipality, we will allow you to speak. But if you are just an ordinary councillor who's expressing your own views, 
we will not unfortunately allow you to speak. Hello, Jen. Because if we are to yes, do so, everybody is going to Hello, speak Jen. and we will not finish. Yes. Can we start with the local municipalities? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first municipality is? Councillor like Kappa from Ingoza, he local municipality, the mayor yes. of it. The mayor, yes. Yeah. The mayor is allowed to speak. The platform is yours, mayor. Your Thank you very much, Chair. As I've already introduced myself, Dingu Councillor like Kappa, who is the mayor of Ingoza, he municipality, recently appointed. But I'm the former speaker of Ingo Zahilo Municipality. I am going to speak just on two points. That the issue of OR Tambo, it's a very serious issue because it deals with the better and brighter issues of OR Tambo, which is water and sanitation. And I speak from the point of being from a new local municipality that is got words. When we talk of the district, district does not have any word. The words are at a local level. And the people that are suffering, are the local municipalities. So I stand here to say I support the view that that municipality, which is our Tambo district municipality, must be dissolved because it's no longer serving the purpose. We fully understand and support the view that we must deal with corruption, but you must never do that to the detriment of the people of our Tambo. There is no water, there is no sanitation, as I'm talking to you. I will just cite one example. As in Muzahili municipality, we constructed a road, a tar road in town, which was meant to deal with e e e e traffic congestion. But what happened is because of the uh, sewer that is a water, water treatment sewer that is not there, it has affected the road and the road now is damaged because our Tambo cannot deliver on that. Because our Tambo is responsible for sanitation and they have a plan to do what is called a waterborne sewer, which means we'll no longer use septic tanks, but we'll use a, 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 the waterborne sewer. But now that is not happening. The, 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 there is a construction that was happening, but ever since there's this turmoil, everything is on standstill. In Flagstaff town, we have been without water for almost six months. Ever since this turmoil started, there is no water in town. Flagstaff is a town and the ratepayers are on our neck. So the sooner this issue is dealt with, the better. If it's possible, can we have an MOU with the district so that the water service authority can be transferred to us so that we can deliver the service in the, the meantime that there is no fun municipality that is functioning. Lastly, Chair, before I close, I want to raise an issue in relation to the district representatives. As in Musa Hilio municipality, we appointed the reps and we sent them to the district. We've got a responsibility and an authority to recall when they no longer service. They are no longer fit for the purpose. They are there on their own. They are no longer taking a mandate from us. And as a council, we took a resolution to recall those councillors. And in terms of Section 27 of the Municipal Structures Act, we have a responsibility to do that. It tells you clearly that you cease to be, you vacate office in each when it comes to the district, when your municipality has recalled you. And that is what we have done. So there is no institution that has got an authority to decide because we are a sphere of government. So we okay. took a decision to recall councillors, therefore we expect them to come back. There is no municipality that has got a right to tell who must Thank be a for in Moza Hill Republic. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next one, give me the indication. Um, hello. Yes. Thank you, Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Miss Julie. Mayor of Mshonto Local Municipality. Okay. Uh, as the LMs, we are deeply frustrated about the situation in our Tambo District Municipality. Now, I will tell you that I understand why the solution of the cancer. Uh, the administration because it beats committees. This are by the administration. I will the politicians. 
Yet inyan is so em sura ukuba e corrachin yondele in kulu e kaile e o arkambo. In front of local municipality can attest that because it troika yes o arkambo. Sai invita is the troika yasem flonto because we've got a big challenge yaman the anga pumio even as a dolopin. Ngogundi teta nao aguko manzi kuitu lupiza semcho ndo pothu kukungu no zolo. Ngogundi teta nao aweko amanzi apeka ez nalini. Ede sisa ngoguwa nigezo nge tracks for e funerals. Kwi locations a semcho ndo zonge ez nini nao amanzi ngogundi teta nao. But it troika ngezi chetu umcho ndo. Ya yeah, you witness that even the project eku nginuayo apa that is service provider ya patalwa imali. I send a social man to look in a good solo. If I got a matangi, then the chicken is a pandi. I'm a troika. I project was not there. I can be even today. I project a gabico man's a solo pin zombie. They are so called a emson to part. I contract a zapa dollar to say a man's enzi. I corruption you on a ilapo in kulu. Forty Ukubanga, but they could sit to a good court. Why it cancels their final bag the administration. If we put it cancels as in a role, a clear to play e oversight. No good on the sake is a Ukuba as the report buzzing because I used to say one, no two, no three wins you. Then Utata Abo Band to Bakupel and Gapand. Uwens and Dobana is a shaky administration. I Kuba no good Limalia Sam Sonto. Ujika imali ezi nkulu, tina, e kufunega sise i services e bantuin. Unga libali keche pesi ndati, the district municipality, ainazo iwati, iwati zipaguti, abantu bapagu, siche kufunega siyo account. Ok. So, na, I'm totally against ke, nogu kotwa kwa bantu, abafanele babata li oversight, nogu kwenisegi, sa nababa votele yu, abafanele bakonisegi, se that service delivery, ya ye bantuin. Thank you, chepesi. Right, thank, you very much. thank you very much. Any other municipality? Chairperson, this is Mayor Sulin the mayor from Nyandeni local municipality. Yes, you worship. <clears throat> Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, firstly, let me say it up front that I'm fully in support of the implementation of Section 139 <laughs> at the district <laughs> municipality. As we speak, Chairperson, whoever the reason is for the situation, but the fact we are confronted with is that that municipality can no longer execute its responsibilities in terms of bringing services to the people of our town. It cannot do it. Now, we know, uh, Chairperson, that for instance, at Nyandi, we are seated below 35% of access to clean, drinkable, running water. Our communities have got no access to water services. And every day we have to talk to communities, try to explain to them that they must accept that they cannot get clean drinking water. And that is a fact. Now, which it is not important who the cause is, but it's a fact that we're confronted with as we speak, Chairperson. Secondly, Chair, in excess of half a billion of the money of that institution in the form of grants have been, has been returned to the national fiscals. And this, against the interest of the citizens of this community, it is a fact that cannot be changed. And we're also made aware that the Treasury has considered withholding the equitable share for that institution, meaning which further that institution will not be able to pursue its mandate and responsibility. Now, with those deficiencies, Chairperson, let me add that portion of the responsibility of that municipality in providing water services is with Amatola Water, and again, another one is with the uh, OR Tambo, uh, 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 this development agency. Now, what is the municipality doing? Because the, 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 the water provision services function is scattered across different entities 
because the municipality cannot stand for its responsibility to provide water services to the people of, of our town. It is not true that there are any people that are particularly against corruption in that institution. Clear efforts have been made to, to frustrate various efforts that have been made by the MEC to intervene through investigation. In fact, the Section 154 support that was provided by the MEC, the person who was sent there was may sent I, back I, by that may council. I, may, I, may I speak for your municipality? The, speak for the, your thank municipality. You. Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Chairperson. But the point that I'm making is that we are representing members of the public. And the information that I'm talking about is the kind of information that is frustrating <coughs> the citizens and voters of this municipality. Because, Chairperson, over and above this municipality providing these services, the voting population must be convinced that the affairs of that municipality are being run appropriately. As, the, as that municipality, we recalled our representatives to that council, and even the IEC removed them from the list. But with utmost disregard to law and legal imperatives, those people that I cannot call councillors continue to be invited to the meetings that are called council meetings in that institution. And okay. as a result, the local municipality has opted to recommend for the expulsion of those individuals. So mm. the reality of the matter is that we do not have what we can call a council in that institution because <laughs> it is the councillors that are doing that. Mm. Okay. There, thank you very much, Chepesi. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. And I apologize that some of you feel think that I'm suppressing. At some point, Parliament will have to shut off all of this, and we need as many as possible so that we listen chair, to you. you. Promise sorry, to chair. It's a and, uh, sorry, chair. Uh, uh, chair. Just wait a bit. Chair. Just wait a bit. Just wait a bit. Is there any other municipality? Okay. Yes, King Sabata Talinga. Yes, the King Sabata Talinga, about chair. Yes. King Sabata Talinga, about chair. Yes, with the platform is yours. Introduce yourself first. Yes, uh, this is uh, Councillor Nelani, the executive <laughs> mayor of King Sabata Talinga. Yes, the platform is yours. Yes, yes. So we fully, fully support, you know, the, the section uh, 39, uh, subsection 1C. Uh, the reasons being, uh, I'm really aligning with my colleagues who are saying we are mandated with uh, the frustrations of the, of, 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 of the, King Sabata Talingebo uh, community, insofar as the delivery of the service of, of water in King Sabata Talingebo, because of the confusion and uh, you know the, the non uh, service of, of the community, uh, more especially in the turmoil which is uh, we are experiencing. Presently in King Sabata Talinge, I mean in, in our time but in general. We are even a uh, chair, you know, uh, pleading with uh, with with our tambo, if it is possible to do a service level agreement with King Sabata Talinge so that we can be able to provide uh, a, a service to our people. Otherwise, uh, in the state we are in presently, we cannot continue uh, and, and, and allow a situation of this nature as, as government. I really, really support uh, the move of the, the MEC because it's going to assist a lot in making sure that uh, there's a service delivery of water uh, to our people. 
I just needed to hammer that uh, in addition of what uh, uh, it was being uh, <coughs> my, my, my colleague. Otherwise, it's really, really a frustration. Uh, All right. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, yes, Your Worship. Yes, thanks, Chair. Uh, any other municipality? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Chatterson. Uh, my name is Ayanda, the name Kanjo from Port St. John's. Uh, let me greet you, Chair, and all uh, committee members. What is your position in that municipality? I am the speaker, I am the speaker, uh, Honorable Chair. Okay, fine. Yes. Yes, thank you, yes, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, greetings to everybody in order at least to um, to manage time. Uh, Chair, one, I think we must, uh, we, we also agree as Pots and Johns that uh, our time, it's in, uh, it's in a very big uh, uh, problem uh, of which we believe in the Kukbano Kukumele ibe iya ngwetiswa iku konsekse ndoba iya puma with challenges that it's facing. Uh, there are a number of challenges that has been uh, presented uh, for a, at least it was a lead. And the challenges that our Tambo has uh, are the challenges as in Kalingu. I think Zinekwa Shalit. Slalo, I Chongenena, so you are Tam. Hence, Slalo, Kaku, Lesha, and the executive Tata decision. Yokoba uh, EI dissolve as a city noco, Codua, Nege, Neti, Sue, a palm go back up along a party about to know my day at dissolve. Because each challenge is a face on an Azuar Tambo noco, Aguzo challenges as no villas long is swinging was so. I think Ubalegi to, to, to also appeal a Kunine committee to appeal to structures. Uh, fears, uh, to the governance to say at least let us find a way in trying to assist the institution as a war term because I believe we still need it. Uh, uh, there are a number of things as Baluayo on the issues that are being raised. And I think one of those issues, it was also presented here uh, when it comes to the investigations that were made, some talks of 4 million and Hundred and something uh, a million, of which we'll find some. At least we do have some information in relation to uh, the execution. Uh, yes, or reports nezos in those as in the gain. For instance, the likes of Lando Inogwenza Neza community uh, interactions, ne uh, outreach as since we were term. In some words, in our local municipality in Port and Johns. Uh, such delegation were there and they did umsebins uh, that were presented uh, awards. So hence, we are saying uh, late decision we do not believe in Doba it's a decision and was we notice and we police a lay institution as a war tambo. Now uh, bazo kwazi ukufumana inkonzo ekufana babayazifumana especially when you are saying you are only dissolving uh, the council then you leave the officials ekuzizo in essence as ends are the actual work uh, we are administration in that particular uh, institution so hence we are saying no it's not a, a, a good decision that we can just support uh, thank you very much all right, thank you very much. Uh, chair. Quick one, Chair uh, YCL, please. I'm a farm away, Kushin, Chair. Chair, can we please make a quick one? I'm a farm away, Kushin, Chair. Recognition, <laughs> please. LGBTI uh, is chair. Uh, look, my family is Yeah, look, look. Let me just re register this this quick point. 
we we must be done by 10 o'clock. And uh, if we we fail to to do what we are supposed to do in the next 20 minutes, this would have been an exercise in futility. Now I just want to check who really want to speak and feels that without speaking and addressing parliament, there will be a major crisis. Let mm -hmm. me establish. So guy, GPT is chair. Uh, We've got chair. chair. It's Ghana chair. Who? Hello, chair. Ghana chair. No, but but how are you? This is Chair, there's Kasi here. Oh yes. Can I give? Can can I afford the mm -hmm. opportunity? Mm -hmm. There's Kasi from Women uh, in Business in our Tambo. Chair. Um, can, can, can I afford this opportunity in Corsi to, to address us, please? Yes. Um, hello? Hello, yes. In Corsi, address us. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm you, for women in business in our town. No, I, I, I'm saying in Corsi, you are not in Corsi. Oh, sorry. Okay. I said in Corsi. Uh, I'm Corsi. I'm Corsi. Okay, you now want to go see Skachi. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the Mungo Sundabin. Masbole le kala basi menye kulenta ngani kusbe kona. Sir, it is it district municipality. Oko kala inko sibezi tete stand. So baz tela ba zinga ngeni kulembutu mbutu. Oko kala nje beke zatela ba. Yonge ndo basi ngati eti siko na mtaumbi. I parties as menu of siko zetet. Kena siko ba i. It cancel a coil, my gain away class. Yes, I'm seven. So I see I'm sending my mother. Hello, thank you, sir. I'm done. You're done. Thank you very much. Uh, very sweet. Thank you. Sure. Can I give Zuki Swa one minute, please? Thanks, Chair. And, 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 and followed by uh, uh, the, the, the women in business. Mr. Tondache. Yes, Zuki Swa. Mr. Tondache. Yes, Chair. Uh, the platform is yours. Thank you very much, Chair. I won't be very long. Sorry, Mar Chair. Sorry, Chair. Yeah, Zuki Sakana is a councillor at KSD. So, oh, Mayor Nelan has already spoke. Uh, Please, yes. please don't allow Zukiza, please. Um, alleges to us that he represents represent the South African Communist Party, the youth of the South African Communist Party. When well, his political party is invited, yeah, or LGBTI is Jefferson, please. That's, that's an order, sir. Please. Proceed. Order, sir. Thank you, no, chair. Order, point of order, order please. Point of order, No, I'm not. I'm not giving that point of order. Order, order, order. Thank yeah. you, chair. Sorry, uh, chair. Zugisa Ghana is a councillor in KSD. Sorry, sorry, chair. Sorry, chair. He can't speak. Where is the, the point of order? Of why why the province is gonna speak on behalf of our town? Where is the district of YCL? Why the province has to speak? Uganda is and why? How were political parties invited? This is uh, order. Uh, look, look, look. You what you are doing is unhelpful. 
you, what you are doing is unhelpful and you want to disrupt us and you are not going to tolerate that. Okay. 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 Any person who speaks without my permission, can you just switch that person off, please? Mustn't come back. You must lock them out, please. I beg you. We are very patient. We are understanding. We don't know your dynamics. We don't even know why you're fighting. We're solving a problem in terms of the constitution, and you are now turning into something that we don't understand. This meeting is a very good and fruitful meeting. Please, let us finish. Uh, I give you one minute, sir. You and we we are go when we consider your submission. We are also going to remember that you are you are a councillor in the in the district. You can speak. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, uh, greetings to you. We'll be very brief. All protocols observed, Chair. Chair, our our first and foremost, Chair. I think we we want to be on record that. We support all efforts to fight corruption. But the decision of whether the Council of Oratambo must be dissolved or not lies on whether or not can this council continue to deliver services under the current circumstances. If a council, there is no clarity about whether or not the council has a duly adopted IDP, duly adopted budget from which it can get its equitable share. While a rural municipality that is unable to raise its own revenue, <laughs> whose services are, he are heavily dependent on our ability to receive equitable share. So if those members who are elected to lead the Council of Automotive City Municipality cannot understand that basic responsibility for them to have a budget so that they can continue to fight corruption, but on the other side, be able to deliver services. We believe that as the youth that resides in our Tambo, that council is no longer able to serve its own peoples. Because if it cannot be able to balance those two issues, it's a zeal to fight corruption, but be able to adopt a budget and an IDP such that there is no questions at Treasury nationally about whether or not there is a duly adopted budget. That is a basis for that council having to fail to execute its executive function. As okay. things stands now, there is no certainty, Honorable Chair, about whether or not tomorrow, if communities that need water, that at times is catered through water trucks, those water trucks can be able to arrive in communities because there's no certainty okay. about whether the decision municipality has funds to deliver those services. And yeah. we are therefore saying, Chair, the decision whether uh, the, to dissolve or not is correct must be taken on the basis of that. If dissolution will assist the district municipality to have a budget to deliver services, then that decision should be correct. But definitely, sure. Chair, we are, last point, Chair, is that, that the national government and parliament must also uh, play a close monitoring role of the intervention that will be done by provincial government okay. and national government in order to restore stability okay. and order okay. and okay. services okay. in all okay. okay. municipalities. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Please. Yes. The last person is the lady who, who was saying she represents the young women in business, something like that, yes? Yes, it's Kosi. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, as far as we are concerned as women in business in our Tambo, is that um, um, the MBC has failed to prove to us that with all the turmoil that is going on in our Tambo, he didn't even present the action plan that he had or the actions that he has taken to assist our Tambo in all the areas that um, he feels that they are not working adequately. So as the women in business in our time, we are against uh, section 139, 1C, based on the fact that um, there should be means for, for the MBC to assist or to act against whatever uh, deviances that the municipality is not acting on. So up until, and up until now, he has not proven that he has done anything in terms of all the issues that have been tabled um, in front of him. So based on that, we're saying you are against the section 139 because 
it means that um, it's not going to serve the community, but it's only going to serve their own interests. We don't want to be involved in political issues, but in terms of business, it doesn't make sense for us to only come at the tail end to say that uh, you are putting the municipality under section 139.1c instead of mitigating the issues and the, 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 the shortfalls of the municipality. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Makosi, thank you very much. Uh, we, we've come to the end of your inputs. And I apologize that at some point I, I, I close everybody now outside. It's OK. Uh, that was the last speaker, and I indicated so. Uh, I apologize that I have to suppress some of you. And, and, and thank you very much for your good deliberations and, and your articulations in terms of where you stand. Uh, in respect of the decision of the provincial government to invoke section 1391C of the constitution to, to our tambo. I'm now going to request Moss, Moss, just request parliament to give us an extension of about 30 minutes because now uh, it will be a remiss of massive proportions if, if members of parliament will not be afforded the opportunity to, to, to ask questions uh, specific questions pertaining to this submission, because what is going to happen out of this, based on what you have indicated, we are going to convene uh, an urgent meeting of members of parliament tomorrow, where we are going to deliberate on on the submissions that are before that are before us, uh, with a view of taking a decision whether we support or let not support whether we approve or we disapprove the intervention by the provincial government. But there could be some clarity seeking questions uh, from the side of members of parliament. I'll open the floor uh, for members to ask those questions if, if any. Any member of parliament, can you just raise up your hands so that I, I note those who want to ask specific questions? I only pick up Honorable Motsamai. Honorable Kenny Motsamai only. Any other member of parliament who want to ask a specific question? I think your messages are very, very clear. Uh, members have noted what you raised before them. I can also add that we are a committee, a specialized committee of parliament that is dealing with all the interventions across the country in all the nine provinces and where a municipality, whether it's a district or a local municipality, whether you are Johannesburg or Tswane or you are a small municipality, we, we are experienced in terms of uh, these particular processes and listening carefully to, to, to both internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. And this committee, I can guarantee you, we are not easily persuaded uh, by, 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 by what people would want to project because we know what is expected of us. We know what is it that we need to do to arrive at a decision that is objective, that is fair, that is equitable and that is in the best interest of the people of the area. And in this case, the Oar Tambo District Municipality. With that, can I invite Honorable Mutamai? I see his, oh, his hand, his hand as well has gone down. It means he's also covered by, by your submissions. As I indicated, if I'm to conclude, we, we have listened to you and thank you very much for availing yourself, for making your articulations, for expressing your views and opinions in respect of the decision of the provincial government. As I pointed out from the beginning, an intervention of this nature is drastic, it is tough, it is abnormal, it is an intervention that is exceptional in all respects. 
And, and uh, because in this particular instance, a provincial government takes a decision to dissolve a municipality, which means if we say yes, this municipality is no longer in existence. If we say no, it means that the decision of the provincial government is reversed. That is why it is quite important to take our time to be patient with you under the circumstances to listen to all the views. We started listening to the views of the provincial government led by the MEC and the presenter, where they shared with us the reasons why they took such a drastic action against the OR Tambo district municipality. We listened to both the mayor and the speaker who are having different views and perspectives about the dissolution. We listened to all the political parties uh, represented in the municipality, uh, where they also gave the articulations in terms of their views uh, pertaining to this. We have noted all the aspects of their submissions. We listened to both Imatu and, and, and Samu, uh, the organized labor within the municipality itself. We have heard them quite clearly about what they had to say to us. We have listened to all the political leadership of the five local municipalities represented in the OUR Tambo. Four municipalities were represented by the mayors and the last municipality was represented by the speaker. We have listened to the youth organizations specifically representing the South African Communist Party, as well as the South African Youth Council. We listened to forced inputs from women in business, from business forum, from business formation, and all of that. There were four submissions which were made uh, to this particular meeting. We have listened to Mkosi Yetu about what they've got to say in respect of this particular decision of the provincial government. As I pointed out, we are going to meet tomorrow to consider all the submissions and have some deliberations as members of parliament based on what you've said. Uh, this will help in addition to the documentations which were submitted to all members of parliament in advance documentations from the provincial government, the municipalities, as well as the officials of the OUR Tambo district. They gave, they made their own submissions about the situation. In addition to that, as I pointed out from the, from the beginning, we had a discussion in the past with OUR Tambo. It wasn't for the first time we do that. We are also going to bring those discussions forward as we deliberate in all of this, because that will help us to understand uh, the nature and the context of the problems that are afflicting this municipality. And in the final analysis, on Friday morning, we will be submitting a report before parliament uh, as to whether do we agree on the dissolution or we don't agree on the, on the dissolution. And as I pointed out, once, the NCOP approves the dissolution, which means the municipality is no longer in place unless those who are not satisfied are exercising their own rights in terms of what is it that they need to do. If we say no, it means it gets terminated and equally unless those who are not satisfied about our decision also exercise their own rights that they are not happy that we have not dissolved the municipality. I don't know what is going to happen. We are a committee of specialized members of parliament who are experiencing these matters. We will deliberate tomorrow. As a chairperson of the committee, I will outline and indicate to members at what time I'm going to consider uh, these submissions that we have received today. With that, let me once more take this opportunity to thank everybody for attending this meeting, specifically the Honorable MEC for always being with us whenever we request him to attend our meetings in all the municipalities and other matters of importance that we engage with 
pertaining to his portfolio. Thank the officials. Take the opportunity to thank the executive mayor of the district as well as the speaker of the district for availing yourself and sharing with us uh, your perspectives and your views about the situation. Take this opportunity to thank all the mayors and other political office bearers from different municipalities, stakeholders, both internal and external political parties, unions. Uh, we, we, we humbly uh, thank your submissions and we will consider them as such in our deliberations. On that note, thank you very much for attending the meeting. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.